They don't, and they're Angel you know, did. That yeah, was, that was a that was a big rivalry. Yeah, but they're friends now. They're fine. They're fine. They're yeah. on the same front front line. They're, I'm just yeah. worried. I, you think that I hope I hope it all works out. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, I do too. You, yeah. hope, you hope it's not like a Jason Kidd Jim Jackson thing from, Ooh, for the Mavericks that. way back when. You yeah. hope you hope those two work I it hope, out. I hope great there's teammates. not an R and B singer that comes between them. I don't know. There's what was her name? Uh, Tori. Uh, it was Tony Braxton. Tony Braxton. Yeah. How dare you, Tori? Tony Tori. Braxton. I like Tony Braxton. Okay, she was no um, Baker. Anita Baker. <laughs> what? You're right. She was no. She Anita was Baker. no Anita Baker. She was no Anita. You're Baker. right about that. Anita Baker much better than Tony Braxton. Uh, don't disrespect Tony Braxton. Oh, yeah, that's oh. Del- diff- watch yourself. Just, Never fear, I will be. No, you you are disrespectful. Yeah, just watch little. yourself, okay? Tony Braxton. Did Anita Baker ever break up a promising young basketball team? Like no, Tony because Braxton she did? no, and I don't want her to do that to a WNBA promising. I don't think front Anita, court. I don't think Anita Baker's going to do that. Okay. Well, we, I hope I hope Chris Brown doesn't break up hmm. what's going on over there. Chris Brown's now an old head for the yeah for for like twenty two years old, twenty two year old women. I hope Miguel doesn't break it up. Miguel's probably an old head too. No, Miguel's not an old head, and he speaks Spanish and for well, it's Portuguese. It's for those girls, for those, uh, oh yeah, there he's an old head. He's, yeah. Justin Bieber's an old head for them. This is what I'm saying. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. I know. He's I not an old head. He's of, in his twenties. I saw a video of um, Justin Bieber at a concert making out with uh, Will Smith's son. No, you didn't yeah, see did. that. Yes, did. Justin Bieber's thirty. Um, no, you didn't yes. see that. Yes. Well, I, no, what I it was a uh, it was. <laughs> That's it was, not what he saw. It, it, what's his name? What's the kid? The Will Will Smith's kid's name? J- uh, Jaden. Jaden. It was Jaden. He came up behind uh, and Justin Bieber him. and grabbed him and like nuzzled on his neck and stuff, well, yeah. or cheek well, or something. But, but they didn't make out. Not per Willow. Se. Maybe he's with Willow. Isn't that his other? No, it was Jaden. It wasn't Willow. Is she the mm-hmm. one that sings the like the hard rock? She'll do that sometimes. Yeah, she's she di- rocks. She's out. diverse. Uh, it wasn't a full on make out. It was like a nuzzling, like two. Get this Texans call in. What are you doing? John brought it up. I don't know why. He started off with WNBA draft talk, and know. now look where we are. I don't know. This is what happens. I mean, Get, the and, video, this, and it's not my ADD. The video does exist. The video does exist. You can see it's it for out yourself. There. And tell me. See if you're, you tell me. Get that first guy. Don't get Let's get uh, Devon. Hey, Devon. Devon, you there? Or Devin. I don't know. Devin, you there? Hello? Hello? Uh-oh. Hello? Yeah, hello? Yeah, I came here and talked about the Texans. Go ahead. Okay, so last last season, they went to the division over the, over the Ravens. This season, you see all that firepower they got. They just got stuff on me. They improved their defense very good. St. Dale's coming back after getting injured. So I have a I have a hot take. I think that the Texans is going to be the best team in their division, and they're going to beat the Baltimore and go to the Super Bowl. Let him cook. Let that young man cook right there. It's not really a hot you, take Devin. for this show. I agree with you. Let him cook. Let's see. Let's see him beat a good quarterback. <laughs> well, other than Joe Burrow. Let's see him beat a good quarterback. You don't gotta, agree with him that they got the firepower to be the best team? Is that a hot take? I don't think it's a hot take. I think it's a good football take. That I think he knows football. I think that young man knows football because he said Houston Texans have a chance to be the best team in the AFC. Do they have? They do. Do they have the firepower? No, they the, don't. They, the secondary. Do they have okay, firepower? Before we put them above the Chiefs, let's win. Chiefs are done. Travis. <clears throat> All right. Hold on, Devin. What do you he, think of the he's Chiefs? He's got one more thing. Yeah, go ahead. Devin. Go ahead, Devin. Uh, Paul Gallant sucks. Paul Gallant doesn't suck. We're not gonna. Wow. We're not letting little kids say that about one of the hosts here. Absolutely not. What? Absolutely not. Wow, that's some guy. Oh Devin, my God. using his kid as a uh, a meat shield to <laughs> take a shot. You don't know that. Yeah, I do know that. Okay, so here are the quarterbacks they play this year: Lamar, yeah, <clears throat> Josh Allen, yeah, <clears throat> um, Williams, the Bears, um. They play golf. Josh Allen without Stephon Diggs. Why don't you, if you're going to speak the truth, speak the whole truth. I said this is the quarterbacks. Yeah, Stephon Diggs didn't play quarterback there, I, I swear. Dak Prescott, uh, Love, uh, Minshew, um, Lawrence, 
Uh, um, Mahomes. I hear a lot of mid. <laughs> Mahomes, Allen, not him. Lamar. Not him. But Love, Eric, the rest of them, Goff, mid, mid. Williams. Mid. Oh, wow. Minshew, mid. <clears throat> Midshew. Where are the other ones? Who's uh, Minnesota going to have? We don't know yet. Uh, New Nobody. England. Who's New JJ England? McCarthy, mid. Who else? Uh, Rodgers. Mid. Rodgers, mid. Aaron Rodgers, mid. Don't even have a right leg anymore. Um, Tennessee, for mid. Good. Um, Tua, mid. mid. That's insulting. The offense. John couldn't wait to the see The offense mid, at a minimum is good. I don't know if you want to call Tua mid, but the offense is good. So we're moving Plus, up in class, boys. Just so everybody knows. And who are who's gonna play? At, in the secondary spots beyond Stingley, uh, that's what we're, they got a bunch of guys. That's Do you like they added any, a bunch of yeah, guys? Do you like it's any like, of them? It's like five or six guys out there covering. Do you like any of them? Yeah. <laughs> Who besides Stingley? What, um, what about the guy was the, the third draft pick of the draft? Uh, Jeff Akuda. He was the third pick of the draft. You like Jeff Akuda as he your starting? He was the third pick of the draft. You like Akuda as your starting I just corner? Said he was the. I'm asking. Did you, I say something that was true? Or I'm not? asking you a different question now. Who's the other one that they got? Uh, Henderson, C.J. Henderson. Yeah, C.J. Henderson was a top ten pick, oh, yeah. like tonight. Yeah, so is Hashim Thabit and Johnny Flynn, Lonnie when, Smith, Wendell Morey got him. Lonnie Smith Jeff was Akuda. a second rounder. Jeff Akuda. You've got two first Lonnie rounders. Johnson. You've got three first rounders in your secondary. Uh huh. A second round. And Lonnie Smith, Lonnie Jimmy Johnson. Ward, a former Pro Bowler. Who's I mean, Lonnie? Holy crap! Who's, you're loaded. Who's Lonnie Smith? Lonnie Lon, Smith. I mean, not Lonnie, Lonnie Smith. Johnson. Lonnie, 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 Lonnie Johnson. Lonnie Johnson. Yeah. Lonnie Johnson. Not the Cardinals. Not Lonnie fielder. Smith, who hits, yeah, yeah hit, the, hit the Astros. So you got a bunch of first rounders, mm. a second rounder, a Pro Bowler. Petrie was a third rounder, second rounder. So you like him? I mean, yeah. How do you, you got nothing but first nothing. and second rounders and pro bowlers back there, Dell? Well, what part of that sounds bad? Actually, the fact uh, that they all failed on their other teams. A- actually, that's why we got we got to do on the other line. side. Is there's some people who are talking about who the Texans will take in the second round? We'll do that on the other side. Eight hundred one ESPN ninety seven five and ninety two five. Right now, you and I are talking about Aqueduct Plumbing. We're talking about Billy Brown, and we're talking about your plumbing needs and whatever they are. Billy Brown is here for you. Billy Brown is awesome. He's got Aqueduct Plumbing. He it, it starts at the top. I talk about this with most all my clients is that it starts at the top and with aqueduct plumbing it starts with billy brown where he's gonna he, he decided no we're not charging you just to go to your home we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna go there we're gonna evaluate the situation and we're gonna tell you how much we can do it for and give you a good price on making sure that you get your water however it is that you need your water but you got to put in uh um you got to put in a grill a gas grill you need a plumber you got issues with your 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 drains. You have issues with uh, your water pressure. You got w- issues with water tanks. Billy Brown's here for you. Billy Brown is, I mean, really, it's really simple. Aqueduct Plumbing Company handles any plumbing issues, and it doesn't matter how big, it doesn't matter how small. Just know that they're going to get it done, and they're going to do it the uh, the right way the first time at a fair price, and they are going to be completely transparent. And the best thing is they get out to you quickly. I mean, if you got plumbing issues, you don't have to schedule it and have somebody coming out two days later. That's just not going to work for you. But they got plenty of trucks. Make sure that Aqueduct Plumbing Company is the name right there in your cell phone. It's aqueductplumbingcompany.com.
You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. You're right. Maybe I overreacted a little bit to the Justin Bieber video with Jaden Smith. Maybe, yeah, they're not well, making they out. come up from behind. and Jaden Smith comes up from behind, and which is what? inflammatory as it is when it's you say not, it like that. No, um, and he, he, well, no, he was a little infl- he was a little reckless with his uh, his gyrations on the on behind Justin Bieber. Then they were listen. All I know is, I mean, it's a different type of masculinity. Well, we now. were talking about there's a they, these guys are this generation's much more secure in their masculinity because it's less toxic and more. Ma- it's, it's, well, it's less masculine. Yeah, it's yeah. a little. It's like a little softer, it's like a little. Not, it's more rounded at the edges and. You know, kind of has a filter on it. Less of yeah. a hard edge. Yeah, See, you less know, hard edge masculine. Listen, I'm, there's not me, a lot of DMX. You, the DMXs of the world don't exist in 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 hip hop anymore. As I, you know, you you don't have the messages of the DMX. It's done. They want to beat things up, but it's not other people. We're they'll just shoot you. They're not. Gonna all throw I hands. know is me and Yanni wouldn't do that. What those two did. Y'all just buy each other pants. No, I didn't buy anybody pants, but. But see, what's that's worse, more. what Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith? What's more inflammatory, that or buying another man jeans? <laughs> Dell, <laughs> make your pick. Well, let me look at the video again before I make a determination. Yeah, that, he went at Justin Bieber. Just, just I think went in to say something. No, but, but like, wait a minute. Wait, well, I'm Jaden look- Smith was a little aggressive uh, from behind. Yeah. There. I'm looking at the video right now. Jaden Smith comes from behind. They start da- groove into whatever song is on, and then Justin Bieber gives Jaden Smith a kiss on the cheek. Mm. Is it, that more? Yeah, but only because Jaden Smith. Went to the side as opposed to going right to the lip. Well, I don't know if that's the case. Um, Listen, he survived P. Diddy. Okay? Justin Bieber survived P. Diddy. Did you ever see the video where Diddy was getting him drunk when he was 16? Oh, it's just... It's just uh, 50 Cent said something about it. It's not It's not great. He's like, we're gonna, we're gonna, I need you to hang out with me. We're going to hang out. And it's just... It's like watching an Epstein video. Ooh. It's Diddy now is, is giving drinks to a 16-year-old Justin Bieber, a 15-year-old, getting mm-hmm. him drunk. Like, uh, we're going to hang out tonight or something. It's, oh, ugh. my God. What, uh, what Jaden Smith does is no different than what a, a dumb frat boy would do behind his buddy. Oh, I'm going to dance behind you. So, I don't yeah. really take that. Yeah. I don't really think much of that. No, and then the kiss on the cheek is whatever. I mean, J- Justin Bieber can always say, you can question me all I want, but I bagged Haley Baldwin. Do you? Yeah, that's true. Do you agree that the the in in that in that male that the masculinity is a little, you know, a little they a guys, little more leveled out now? It's it's not toxic like you like your masculinity, uh, Dale, yeah, like, at your yeah, pizza like, king yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, like it's me. more of a softer like, hey, it's softer I'll, like, I'll, hey, I'll, you can we can make out. I would out. say, yeah, it's I would softer, say, like, yeah, hey, yeah, we're like masculine that. enough to make out now. Mm. Yeah, I would say they are less like cons- they are less concerned with the views of people who aren't in their friend group. Yeah, like yeah. okay. Painted fingernails, painted toenails. Chris Long, Chris Long has painted toenails. Mm-hmm. Offensive lineman. There's actually a lot of offensive linemen that does painted toenails. They don't care. They don't care what you say. Jalen doesn't care. I don't care what anybody says. And what? Who's the guy? And who was it for the Duke? Who Duke? Who has the nail polish thing? Was it McCain? I don't know which one it yeah, was. It's, I think it's McCain. I mean, see, yeah, they're no. they're they're. they're Secure. Yeah, they don't I'm, need I'm not your. Gonna be, I'm not gonna be toxic. You could. Ju- you know what? If that's masculinity now, making out with each other. I don't even great. know if it's masculinity. It's just, hey, that's my buddy. Hey, man, how's it going? Don't don't your Italian guys kiss each other? In the yeah. Cheek? What are you talking about? You come from. Cheek. That's yeah. what he no, did. You kiss guys no, this, full on make out. He was out. going in right no. after. He got, he, <laughs> and you think Jace was turned his cheek? The Italians from behind. are. A Listen, if you did that to a girl, Greece. you be a, a, you. It would be assault. Not if a girl. Now, not I like how Smith to ignore his Greek heritage. Yeah. Well, there uh, that is too. There is that. Speaking of salt, okay. Uh-huh. So uh, this one guy identified a target for every AFC team. Okay. Second round. Kamari Lasseter. Nah, I can't get down with that. He ran a four six. He ran in a four sixes. What position are you playing him at? He playing him at corner. You playing him at nickel? I guess I like him as a football player. He's tough <clears throat> against the run. I mean, you could, you could, but as a nickel, he can't play outside. He's too slow. What about the Notre Dame corner? Cam Hart? Yeah. Nah, he's more like a fourth rounder. Really? Huh? He had a really good game against Marvin Harrison they, Jr., but then they point out Marvin Harrison Jr. had been hurt earlier in that game, but he's too inconsistent. He's big. Now, I could see D'Amico kind of liking him because he looks like a D'Amico corner. 
I could see that, but I don't. I don't expect him. I don't think he'll get drafted in the first two rounds. I know I, he's not getting drafted in the first two, maybe three, but could be four. Uh, any okay. So who you had him targeting in the second round? Well, I think safety Tyler Newbin would be one I would look at. Um, we're not doing wide receivers, right? No, not there. Well, it's only not there. one year. It's only one year. Yeah, we got to remember now. Free agent Nico Collins and yeah, and uh, you want to be in a position like the Bills were are right now, where the Bills literally are desperate for wide receivers. You have Nico Collins. The Texans will go in knowing if they're going to re-sign Nico or not. Stephon Diggs, they don't know. I'm not sure yeah. if you don't have a really quality. I, I, if you got a quality wide receiver there, I think by the third round you could be looking at wide receiver again. Right. I don't think in a second, but I could be wrong. But if you draft one in a second, you're basically you're giving big draft capital to a position that you. You're basically saying Stephon Diggs is a one-year rental. And maybe you already know that, John. That's what then you just did. It? You then just did it? that. Then why do it? Why do a one-year rental for Stephon Well, Diggs? if you're going to do a one-year rental for, rental for Stephon Diggs, it doesn't, wait, it doesn't wait, wait. make any sense getting a wide receiver. You need to add somewhere where you have a need position well, because you're going for it. So remember this. You traded next year's second. So you don't have a second next year. No, you traded uh, the, the Vikings next year's second. That you, you still got, got yours. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's right. You have you your still own. have yours. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So. Um, I think that you, I think it's really tough because they've they've made it a lot tougher to guess what they're going to do. I, I honestly think running back's a sneaky, important need right now. I, I, just, I can't trust Damian Pierce. I don't think he fits this offense. So, I know you can find running backs, but I don't think it's crazy that Jonathan Brooks, if he sle- <laughs> sneaks into the third or – I think it's a second or it's a, it's a safety or a, c- a corner. I think it's got to be. What about Edron Cooper if he's sitting there? I like Edron Cooper. Yeah. I consider Edron Cooper really fast, um, can spy quarterbacks, has great sideline to sideline speed, physical, aggressive hitter. I'd be shocked if D'Amico Ryans doesn't like Edron Cooper. I think, uh, I think, uh, not. Not Carson. Was it Colson Carson? The the, the safety line, the Houston. linebacker out of uh, Michigan. Oh oh. Um, hold on, Junior. Yeah, Junior Colson. To me, it'd be Colson could be a second round pick. It could be uh, Edron Cooper. Those would be two guys with their forty two. I'd consider them. Edron Cooper from Texas A and M, by the way. Yeah, who was Junior uh, Colson is Michigan. Both of them, so, I think, are good players. But you just, but I think safety is an important one too. Tyler Newbin has great ball skills. But you just got out of year. Now the Texans were like one of the tops in the league at playing a four-two-five. One of the tops in the league at playing. But Edron Cooper can play. He can play. Yes, that's true. But Edron Cooper can play in coverage too, and he can blitz. He's a really good yeah. blitzer. But you're right, as Al Shire, I have to see if he comes off the field. Because if he comes off the field, Cooper would make a lot of sense. But if he doesn't come off the field on passing downs, if he's a plus pass defender, which I have to check, then you're right, linebacker becomes almost a... I don't know that he's coming off the field. How much did we see Denzel Perriman last year on the field in passing situations? Yeah. And if you could keep that guy who couldn't cover on the field, you're going to keep El Shire or well, even Edrick got, Cooper. You got beat with him on the field. Well, that's what happened, I know. But they still kept him on the field all year. They never changed it. I'm, yeah, I, I really think safety needs to be a concern. I think safety corner, wide receiver, it really is true. And tight end. Tight end is another one I think you're going to be looking at. And it wouldn't shock me if you're looking at tight end. Now, this is not a great tight end draft, but it starts to me, outside of Bowers, it starts maybe late second. But you might see, you might not see a tight end go until there's an outside chance you won't see a second tight end go until the third round. So I can see the Texans dipping into the tight end the tight end pool in the third round. I could see running back uh, in the late second, uh, the last pick of the second round, maybe even trading back and picking up a running back would be an interesting uh, pick. You could go, I don't think they'll go specialist like a Will Shipley out of Clemson. I think they'll go legitimate three down backup and Jonathan Brooks uh, from University of Texas would be a a good selection to me. If Roman Wilson is sitting there, do you have to take him? No. No? No, because Roman Wilson won't won't play much this year. But you're also not making a draft for this year no. if you draft him. You don't want to be in a position where you're stuck next year. Yep. All right. I think you're in a position where you have to – Nico has to get done. You're going to have to do Nico. And, and maybe if – I don't know what the situation looks like, but maybe you 
you have to give them some money this year and guarantee them in the future. I, I would get it done this year if you can, if you financially could, because you don't want to be in a position where his agent can press you next year. The more deals that get done, the higher he's going. Yeah. All right, 713-780-3776 is the number if you don't want to get in here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. It's property tax time, okay? This is the season. Property tax time. It is awful. I let it slip one year, and boy, boy do I regret it because I just let it, oh, well, oh, well, they charged us more. It's a That's a killer. I'm telling you, you can't let it get up there because – Every year, the government is going to put tech on more and more and more, and they're going to push the limits of what they can do, even exceed the limits of what they can do, because there's a limit on what they don't care. They're going to overcharge you. for. They're going to tell you that your house appraises for way more. Well, how about this? I got an easy way. It's so easy to sign up at OwnWell. You're going to, it's so simple. You put property tax money back in your pocket in just minutes. You don't have to do a thing. 86% of OwnWell's customers save on their property taxes. Hundreds of thousands of happy customers. Five-star reviews. You, an average savings of $1,148. I mean, 86%. That means the government is just trying to rip you off every single time. It's unbelievable. Local tax experts backed by cutting-edge technology. Best-in-class customer support help. Save money on your property taxes with OwnWell. Sign up in less than three minutes and start your protest today at OwnWell.com. That's O-W-N-W-E-L-L.com. You know how I know Maestro do Bell is really great? Because somebody's been sneaking into my office, in my refrigerator in my office, and drinking from not only my Cristalino, but also my, Añe my Añejo. So to that person, I say, um, you're welcome. And I told you it was really good, you punk-ass loser. But to the rest of you, I'd say, just purchase Maestro do Bell and find out for yourself so you don't have to sneak into a coworker or a person's office if you are a worker in there, you're cleaner or... You're just somebody who works at the other station. You don't have to go into somebody's refrigerator and steal their Maestro do Bell and drink from the bottle where the bottle keeps going lower and lower because the flavors are so delicious and delicious profiles on the Maestro do Bell, the, the um, Cristalino, which is a blend of three different tequilas. This person who stole mine found it out for themselves when they're drinking. Well, they didn't steal it. They just keep drinking from it, thinking I wouldn't notice. Oh, I noticed. Trust me, I noticed. The Añejo down that low, oh, I noticed. Yes, the Añejo is a, has a creamy, delicious finish that is unbelievable for a sipping tequila. 
It's my Friday go-to, and yet someone somebody is getting into my refrigerator. What a shame. Do yourself a favor, loser's theft, and just go to your local liquor store, demand it by name instead of going into my refrigerator, and say, hey, why don't you carry Maestro do Bell so I can experience it for myself? It's Maestro do Bell. Buy it. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Can we talk about what he just did? The what? accusations he's throwing out? I settled a score on a commercial. Now, what? now, John, you know your partner somewhat well. Yeah. Do you think he just is drinking a lot of it and he's an alky, doesn't remember? No, I know exactly. Or when do I'm you think it. someone's actually taking his vodka, his Maestro de Bell? Do you think that's happening? Which one's more likely? Do you, you th- well, I think someone's going, sneaking oh. into his office. Sneaking oh, no. into an office. And- so who do you think it is? Oh no. Oh, it's probably Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Paul. Why is Paul? It's a hundred percent not Paul. Okay. I have been thinking about this. I think it's probably an overnight. I think it's probably or overnight, a we weekend. Don't, we don't have any overnight people anymore. Well, weekend, late night, a late night producer. Who's in the, running is this? it Abigail? Oh, you, he has an obsession. Is she in there drinking my Maestro do Bell? I don't know. I have to tell her something. Is, I would doubt she even knows. Wrong is with it you? that one have, guy that I don't know his name who is in here eating his own sandwich? You know a lot. I don't want to put people on blast, but somebody's taking my Maestro Bell. I th- know for 100%. You think it's someone who runs the Space Cowboys and they, they go into your office and could be after 10 p.m. and goes and gets a drink i don't know it's not the guy that mops i see him i'm up here writing players up he comes in he's a nice guy he would never you think of someone who actually works at the station it's gotta be yeah it's gotta be or it could be somebody from the other radio station on the weekends who come in and and see my door maybe they open it up and they start rifling through themselves some okay i 100 percent on my kids my maestro bell is missing okay so it's probably somebody who works at the station. Does Paul work at the station? Yeah, he does. Yes, he does. Okay, then. Okay. The, it w- stops there? That's that's all Case the closed? investigating you want to do? You're a terrible detective. What about Sean Mapes? I'm tired. <laughs> you're you're going to retire in a couple days. Case closed. <laughs> We're just trying to get this one on the books. That's right. You're like the you're like the investigators. People one final prison. case. Over you just because you want to get the books closed. Like, we found some evidence that, that contradicts it. This might be a free man. You're burying it because you don't yeah. want to have to open the case oh, back up. too tired. Joe George sounds like he's drunk a lot. Wow. Yeah. That's insulting on a couple levels. Yeah. No, no, no. I mean I mean that in the nicest you possible You think he's way. stealing, and you think his what he says on the radio makes it sound like he's drunk. So, sometimes. So, some of the things he says. Okay. Have so you listened to that? That's what I said. It's insulting on a couple levels. <laughs> I don't think it's anyone who works here. I think Lance is just forgetting. He gets, Probably. He just gets drunk not, here and forgets. Yeah. It's not. It's, I, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure you're just forgetting stuff. It's that, not. That's probably the reason. That Crystallino is fairly new. It can't be half gone. It what, can't what, what be, you, not it can't be. Can't be if you're always drinking it. Come on now. Be uh, for real, Dell. <laughs> you be for real. Uh, so seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six is the number. So we've limited it or narrowed it down to the Gallant and George show. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> one of the two of them is doing it. Uh, it could be Mapes. You don't know. That's what I said. Well, that's another guy on that show. Yeah, it's, it could be Mapes. <laughs> okay, it's one of those guys. One of the three. Which have you guys seen Dion's act? What is he doing? We haven't now? talked about this. That he's only letting Travis Hunter and his two sons play for six teams. The Eagles, the Niners, the Cowboys, the Ravens, the Falcons, and the Commanders. I don't know how the Commanders got in So, there. okay, say them again. The Eagles. Hold on, okay, it's fine. The Niners. Played for. Cowboys. Played for. Ravens. No. Oh. Falcons. Wait, wait, wait. I think Deion did play for them late he in his did. career. He played for the Commanders, too. What? So he's only letting them play for people he played for? When did and he the play Falcons. for the Eagles? He, didn't, he never played for the Eagles. Yeah. No, I know. Other than the Eagles, other than the Eagles, that's five teams that he played for. He played for the Commanders? Redskins? I, Commanders. I believe so. When they were that other name. Did he really? I think so. I don't remember that. I remember. I think I remember Ravens. He did play for the Ravens. Yeah. That's a definite. But I thought he played. So Dion said, okay. Yeah, he played for the Commanders 
the Washington football team in 2000. So five of the six Dion played for. What, what, what is with Dion deciding, God, Lee, you want to talk about helicopter dad? This is as bad as Marv Marinovich having his kids feed on kidney, having Todd Marinovich feed on kidney, uh, you know, when he was little, chew on frozen kidney so he could get all that, get protein and so iron he's, and whatever he's got else. An, He's got a, such an issue. Did he mention the Falcons? Is that on the list? Yeah. Too? Okay, Falcons. So the it's only, so lame. Why? Why the Eagles get thrown in? I don't know. I don't know. But why? Okay, so he says he ain't going if they're drafted. He's picking the team. Travis Hunter's like, damn, I didn't know this is my biological dad bossing me around like yeah. this. You'll do what I say. Oh, don't worry. He's do gonna... you believe now, Travis, that I'm in charge of you? This is. You know what this is? This is. I got do you believe that? As that Svengali. What was his name? Bobo or. Uh, Remember that we used to that Raheel could do the really good imitation of him. No country. Remember the the. You mean the guy who would like not like trick women into sleeping with him? That guy? yeah, that guy. I, I have to look it up. I don't. What's his, his name? name? That remember it was like. No country, not no country for old men, but and they had the girl Marsha the. The Indian girl that was real sassy and was always trying to, to beat the media down. It was a cult. Oh, I, I get. Well, Raheel was part of that cult. No, that's a different one altogether. He no. made that up. A wild, wild country. Wild, wild country. I don't that's remember what, that. He's like that Svengali there, the hot or the Bikram hot yoga guy, or any number of. For some reason, I guess I've watched a lot of documentaries about people who end up, kind of being, you know, being able to brainwash people. Keith, whatever, who did. Keith Rainier. Keith Rainier or the Scientology guy. I don't know why I've seen so many of these. What's but, wrong with yeah, you? Yeah, that's what Dion's like. I but thought he's you like were that. working on the draft. No, these are over the years I've seen these. No. I just don't remember all their names because I've seen a billion shows. But, yeah, that's what Dion is where he is in charge. He's the boss of where people can go and what they can do. Does he let his kids, does he have to okay their girlfriends or who they have relations with or did they get to? Does he have? Do they have to run their food choices by him? You don't think he classifies Can they buy a car? What, you don't think he classifies what girls are girlfriend material? You don't oh, think he's oh, had oh, that yeah, conversation? Absolutely, absolutely, a hundred percent, absolutely. There's no chance that that Travis is a uh, Now you can do this, but you can't marry her. There are some girls you can have quote unquote fun with, and then the other girls that yeah. you, that are serious. But Dion telling them where they can play. Well. Like, he has well, got telling, somebody. Dion must be stopped. Well, he's telling the NFL that if you're not one of these teams, don't draft, don't my draft guys. him. Dion must be stopped. Their place was where Dion played other than one. How good is Shadur going to be? I think he's got a chance to be pretty good. You do? Yeah, I do. I know I know the negativity is going to be about the personality. And, and listen, that bothers teams. It's one thing to be confident with a little cockiness. That doesn't scare people. But when you're hard to deal with or if you put yourself above the team – you got to remember now. This is a guy who gets all these nils that, that his dad gets him. Like he's he's been enabled by his dad. He's not under. He's under the same problem it was with Kyler Murray, with David Carr, with all these guys who have had these helicopter dads that are over the top of them. That's Shadur Sanders. It's no different. Dion may you may you may act like Dion's different, but Dion is telling Shadur who can draft him. Yeah. And De and Shadur's like, yes sir, yes sir. That's who I'm gonna like. That's not great to have that. Is he enabled? Is he entitled? He's, these are things NFL teams are – is he his own man? Like, how's he going to act when he's out on his own making his own decisions? Or is Dion going to be a problem for us in the locker room? Like, these are questions you have to ask. You'd ask it about any other any other dad, uh, overbearing mom or overbearing dad. Is this person going to be a problem? Of course they ask that question. And with Dion right now, how could you not think he's going to be a problem? Oh, he's got, he absolutely will be. Oh, and he's he he's got the pulpit to criticize you at the highest level. Yeah, and he will and he will continue to like. Well, if you draft them, you need to draft his other son. Yeah, and you need to draft. You need to see about trade moving. And up by the way, Travis when they're not playing or they're not playing well, it's going to be your fault. Yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. I like it's 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 not the same as Lavar Ball. But it's in the it's, it's in the similar. zip code. Yeah, it's, it's in the zip code. And with a bigger with a bigger audience. How's it even bigger? Lavar was on every show imaginable. No, they put him Le on everything. Dion's on every week. Yeah, but if he's not coaching anymore, will he be? He's gonna be coaching. Is he? <laughs> you think he's gonna stop coaching once his kids get to the NFL? I don't think he'll be at Colorado. No. 
Well, he may go we'll somewhere see. else. We'll see. He may go some. Most people do not believe he'll be at Colorado. Colorado. They think he'll go somewhere with the money. Well, they have more money for him and more money to work with. Well, he better. I win. think Dion wants to. Now he better win. Yeah, because he's because Dion Sanders is a little bit of a uh, he's a little bit of a pain, but he also brings a lot of positivity to your program. There's a lot of positive that comes with Dion, but but you know you'll deal with that when it's nine and ten wins. It eventually, it has to be 10 and 11. Is Shiloh going to be Thanasis? Oh, yes. How about Thanasis missing the dunk the other day? In the magic crew. And the Thanasis magic was bench nuts. was just clowning him. You can't, like, Th- Thanasis is probably the worst thing you could call somebody. Thanasis is awful. Well, sh- it's the worst thing you could call. You want to talk about a Nepo, only it's Nepo from a brother. So is that the same? Is, is he still Nepo, baby? If he's a brother it's and nepotism. not a, It's nepotism, sure. It's still nepotism, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It doesn't yeah. have to come from the parent. No. Yeah. Yeah, he's nepo, baby. All right. Uh, we got to talk about, uh, I got to talk about Doc Manavis right now because Doc Manavis, I'm going to go see her on Friday, as a matter of fact, about, uh, I got some lower leg pain. And if you have any lower leg pain, you need Doc Manavis because it could be veins and she's got an easy fix for you. And I'm telling you, if, you know, your calves and your ankles and stuff, if you're not getting... Uh, if the blood flow is not great there, then you're going to have an issue. And she says she wants to get you before you're 50 years old. So here's the deal. If, older guys, you need Doc Manavis because there's a chance you've got some prostate issues, right? We all get prostate issues. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. Prostate, Your prostate is going to spread out. It's going to grow. It is going to, It is going to be a problem for you. If you are somebody that has a prostate issue, you need Doc Manavis. She is the best. She's going to give you an IV. You get an ultrasound first on both for your veins and for your prostate. You get an ultrasound first. You get an MRI. Make sure that there's no cancer, and and then you're going to get the job done. On the veins, just the ultrasound, and then she can she can work her magic. It is the place to go for your problems. You're looking for the best place. Please, please, please go to 975prostate.com. That's 975prostate.com. Guys, for personal injury lawyers, it's uh, when it comes to your choice, there's a lot of goofballs out there. You see them, you hear them. I heard one on another station that was basically telling people to get into an accident if they can so they can make millions and have millionaire problems. I was like, well, that's, that's what you want right there. I'm sure that guy's above board. No way he's going to try to screw you also. That's what happens. A lot of the personal injury lawyers out there, they spend money to get on billboards and and goofy commercials, and then you pay the price by not having great representation. John Daspit and the Daspit Law Firm, he's got, he and a lot of his lawyers, 
came over from Fulbright Jaworski. He started his own law firm. He has 10 offices around the state of Texas. You have uh, someone who has over 70 people working for him, so they're putting in the amount of time they need to on every case. They don't take shortcuts. And they are going to get every penny you have coming to you to pay for all your medical bills, all of your time missed from work, all of your pain and suffering, uh, loss of life if that happens. I mean, anything that, that, that is going to come out of your pocket or that where, why you suffered or how you suffered, they're going to take care of you. And that's, that's what you need to have on your side is you need to have someone like John Daspot fighting for you. It's 713-CALL-NOW. That's 713-CALL-NOW. Or just go to the website for more information today at DaspotLaw.com. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Uh, breaking news. Fire uh, The Sabres fired Granado. What? Yeah. They fired your cousin? They fired my cousin. Four Who years. Who got him fired? That got the 39 win season. They fired him. You know, got him fired. That guy was sitting behind you who was saying, do something, Granado. Do something. It might have been the GM. <laughs> yeah, <no>. Possibly. <laughs> might have been the owner. <laughs> uh, that sucks. Oh, well. Good guy. Really good guy. Hey, Greg Zerline's a free agent, so, you know, we're having a tough time here. You, what? Oh, that's a different, that's Z U E R. It's not related to you. It's not even related. But it's, but it's the same pronunciation. It's not even spelled it's the not same even. way. Same pronunciation, though. No. It's not. Zerline, Zerline. Yeah. Zerline. Caitlin Clark is plus 1,000 to win MVP. Fourth favorite. Fourth most likely, according to the, the betting well, line. She's got something coming to her. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> they're going to they're gonna teach her a lesson. So, how much how much is Caitlin making? This year, from the fever. Do you know some? Well, I gotta say this. Do you see the other day somebody said uh, during the draft? Somebody goes, "Oh my God, um, um, known pay cut taker Caitlin Clark just had three insurance commercials over the last two segments show up on." Man, I hope that pay cut doesn't hurt too bad. Um, how much does she make? I don't like. Do you have the answer? Yeah. Uh, like one point five. <laughs> I don't know. Over the course of her career? Oh. Not even close. Uh, 350. <laughs> Lower. Over that, well, that's less than the her no, contract. No, no, no. Just this year, how much she's going to make? Oh, her, her contract is yeah. less than 350. Yeah. Four years. What? Yeah. Yes. It's the WNBA, bro. That's why I said it. Are you sure she's going to make as much? Well, well she's all got the advertising. All the, yeah, I don't know. She might have more eyes at Iowa. Well, State Farm ain't going anywhere. She'll no, keep making no. money. No. No, but, there's more TV. But if she kind of fizzles out because the WNBA ain't producing the same kind of numbers I don't that think Iowa fizz, does. I don't think it'll fizz out over a year. I don't know how much she made. She probably, 76 she probably made it. this year, 78 next year, 85 and 97. Be for real. How do you play for the Sparks in L.A.? Or how do you play for the Liberty and make this kind of money? And this is the number one pick. You can't live in New York on that. You can't live in New York on that. That's why you got to have a. Well, you don't live in Frankie New York. Frankie makes more than you. That's why you got to have a partner. Pa Frankie makes more than Cla Caitlin Clark. Well, salary wise. Salary. Sure. That's yeah. pathetic. Has she ever made a three from t 30 feet away? No, she's a. Frankie? She, but has Caitlin Clark ever dominated a darty? I don't think Frankie's ever made a. Basket. <laughs> what did you say? I said, has Fr Caitlin Clark ever dominated a darty before? Yeah, has she ever dodged a day she party? Has she ever climbed a fence and got away has, from has, cops? Has Caitlin Clark ever been <laughs> like pulled Frankie in? Has? has Caitlin Clark no. ever. Has Caitlin Clark ever been pulled into a meeting where she was bullying a f an overweight girl? <laughs> well, I, yes. has Frankie ever led the NCAA in assists? Has Fra has has Caitlin Clark ever had six accidents? No. Um, but we don't know that. Maybe. Well, maybe you're right. We don't know. You don't know. We has don't know. Frank has Lynette Woodard ever down talked the accomplishments <laughs> of Frankie Granado? No. No. Or had Sue Bird has. Has super has anyone come after Frankie said she's got a she's got a rough lesson she's about to learn up here in New York when she gets here and works for whoever. Does that ever that, happen? That's never happened. Okay. Oh my God. Did you guys see this? John Singleton yesterday hit a ball 116 
miles an hour in batting practice. I got to take issue with the Astros and what they did yesterday. CJ Stroud's out there throwing the first pitch. They, they said John, John Singleton. An absolute Why? dart. And it was a dart this, right over the plate. Why? Because Why is John Singleton and not Jose Altuve catching Hold on, that? Because, because it's African Jackie because Robinson, it's Jackie Day. Robinson Day. Day. That's why. Why would you have a Venezuelan catch? Oh, we catch? didn't have any choices. Yeah, well, it's only John Singleton. <laughs> Renault Blanco? No. No. Count. See. And I Christian would like, Javier? And no. I'd like to point out, the Braves called up a pitcher, f- and you know who they ran out there? Darius Vines. The Astros couldn't even start John Singleton. What's the difference between him and o- Obreu? Yeah. John Nothing. Singleton couldn't have started On Jackie yesterday. Robinson Day. What the hell? Well, at least he got to catch the first pitch. Yeah, great. That was, uh, that was, that was cool. Good. He didn't even get the play. Hold Breaking on, barriers at, for... for First pitch catcher. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is That's it, what he was wearing a T-shirt that said "Breaking Barriers." I know. But wait a he, minute. Not enough to play is that though. The only black player we have this year. Yes. Yeah. We didn't have any. We had, we, well, were, Corey, we were limited on number of guys CJ could throw to yeah. on Jackie Robinson Day. What if they called Corey Jelks up just to catch the first pitch, and then option him back down after the game? Well, maybe this is why they didn't DFA Singleton yet. They needed him for t- yesterday. One day. Oh, I never thought about that. I what just, if we get the word today? I just want to point John out. John Singleton has been designated for assignment. I was a little conflicted yesterday. Sure, I wanted the Astros to win, but then I saw Singleton's not even playing, and the Braves have Darius Vines on the mound. I was like, all right, I'll, maybe maybe the Braves should win this one. For those who missed it, Spencer Arigetti was better than his first go-round. Didn't give up. Gave up two runs in four innings. Worked out of a, a long, long inning where he was his own worst enemy in some regards. He had an, uh, an error by uh, Jeremy Pena, that was kind of helped along by kind of piss poor fielding by Jose Abreu, but whatever. It was Jeremy's, it was Jeremy's error, but Abreu's got to get off the bag and keep the ball from getting by so it doesn't turn into a run. Um, so the Astros lose that one at home, but they're back at it today against the Braves. And your starter today is uh, the great it? Hunter Brown. The yeah, great Hunter right. Brown. That's right, Hunter Brown. <laughs> I'll be there, uh, but unfortunately, I don't have seats in the Crawford boxes. Uh, chance to catch a home run. You, uh, home where run. are your seats? You better be up on the train tracks. Where are your seats? I got John. Man Daspa of the people, seats. John Daspa. Gave Man me of the some people, seats. where are your seats? John Daspa gave me. Oh, seats. right behind home plate. Well, to be fair, sex, you won't see me, but they're good seats. Lance has never called himself a man of the people. No, That's he's not your a man thing. of the people. I call myself man of the people because guess what? I'm a man of the people. How about it was right down the plate, right down the pipe. I mean, it was right. I right mean, it down was, the pipe. Well, the I saw him motion, warming up. His warm up wasn't great. The throwing motion isn't great. No, it's not great. Are it's we, not great, and yet the results are but perfect. It, but listen, if perfect. you don't ever throw a baseball, which I don't know how much how many baseball CJ, not it's many. not easy. No, not many. Well, compared to a football or basketball, if you throw the ball down the middle, isn't that bad in baseball? So CJ, we're, paint the corners, okay? No, not on the first pitch. Work you don't on, want to paint the corners. Work on your accuracy. He's trying to flex. Um, he can't do anything but hit you right in the hands. Work on the accuracy. Paint the corner. Don't stop the guy's feet. We would talk to him about that in football. Paint the corner. The ball's going out the ballpark. No, if you put somebody there, he would paint the corners. But right in the first pitch, he wanted to go right where the glove was. Mm. He hit the target. No. That's where the target was. Did you see Singleton set up outside? If Singleton had set up outside, he would have hit that target too. The throwing motion. Throw the guy open. Sit. So I motion was not my favorite I've seen. <laughs> I like people that really, really open up the shoulder a little bit. It is weird how many great athletes can't throw a baseball. I no. never really thought about the fact that if you don't play baseball, you, don't play baseball. you can't throw. No. But even throwing a football. It's, and it's small and it's light. It's like, hard to throw. And, I, and, I, and, and listen to this, but it works the other way, too. I was at camp when Carlos Correa was a rookie. After his rookie year, he was out at Texans camp. And he was throwing a football with JJ. It didn't look good. No, it looked quite terrible. He doesn't know how to throw football. Like where in Puerto Rico would he played football? I know, but I just figure football and baseball. It's, I mean, there's a lot of the throwing motion is similar. How yeah. do you? How can you I not you throw a football? How many times has he held a football? He's like he's throwing it like he's never held a ball before. Well, a football at least. He doesn't. He hasn't. Yeah, but come on. If you can throw a football, you can throw a baseball. If you can throw a baseball, you can throw a football. I didn't say it has to be a perfect spiral. But it shouldn't look all flicked like big, it looks. How big they are look his hands? They look all flicked when they throw. How big are his hands? I don't know. Um, Maybe he's got smaller hands. No, Carlos Correa is going to have bigger hands. Yeah, Carlos. I don't know. Hey, how about he hurt himself diving for a baseball last week? 
Not not good. That's not my shortstop um, anymore. Seven three seven eight zero three seven seven six. If you want to get in here uh, to hang out with us, you're more than welcome to do that. Seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. All right, welcome back here on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. You know, with the additions, Daniel Hunter, uh, uh, Aziz uh, El Shair, with the all the cornerbacks they've added, with Will Anderson in second year, but the listen, they weren't a top. They were a middle of the pack defense last year. Uh huh. Against those quarterbacks that they played. Yeah. I mean, it, when we went down the list with two Lamars, you had in which they didn't play well against Joe Burrow, who got them at the end because of the mistakes that they made, um, the interception that CJ threw late. So they 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 you know they scored more points. Um. Baker, they played pretty well against Derek Carr. They, but they played just really bad quarterbacks. Well, they came from they came from behind on three of those three of those wins. Yeah, Baker, uh, Burrow, now, and uh, now you're playing Mahomes. You're playing Josh Allen. You're playing uh, Lamar Jackson you're, again. You're, you're playing team, Aaron Rodgers. You're your playing, second year playing. You're a better team. You're you you'll have. I mean, you're a better team. But okay, so your offensive the thought was healthy. with all the additions defensively. Hey, this could be a top five defense. Not against this. Not against these quarterbacks. Well, we'll find out. I, I, I just, I really. Do you want to? Do you know who the Bills have at wide receiver right now? It's terrible. It's nobody. Yeah, they're yeah. in a massive. Sp- I, I don't think Josh Allen can just carry a team, make anybody. He's not Aaron Rodgers as a passer. He's not just going to make everyone better. So I, I, I would not. I'm, I hesitate to put Buffalo in that group. They lost Gabe Davis. They lost Stephon Diggs. They're in a desperate situation where one of their top receivers is going to be a rookie. And guess what? You ain't getting one of the top four receivers in this draft at pick number 25. You're going to have to trade up to be able to do that. So, uh, you know, I think it's more likely that maybe they trade back and take two wide receivers in the second round. So we'll we'll see. So I'm not ready to, to give that to them just yet. We'll find out with the Jets what Aaron Rodgers has left. 
Um, who's the other one you're afraid of? The Chiefs, big deal. Pat anyway. Mahomes, Rasheed Rice may not even play this year. That, that was his top wide receiver. Yeah. Okay. Well, you, I mean, seriously, the other guy, Travis Kelsey, barely cares about football anymore. <laughs> nah, Did you see him dance with Taylor? Yeah, the, he's just a full on Swift. They were, were they at the Masters? I th- I know he was at his graduation this weekend, right? He went and got his diploma from Cincinnati. Oh, he did? They gave him one? And then eventually he and Taylor did something. So They were at some kind of a party. They were at Coachella. A, okay, Coachella. Oh, it was at Coachella? They were at Coachella, yeah. So you feel good about the Texans up front stopping the run? I feel great about the Texans. Stopping the run? I feel great about everything. Can't have a conversation with this guy. Yes, no. you can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Why would I not feel good You're about the Texans stopping the run? I'm going to tell you this. You feel about hand- Double-A gap blitzes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just settle. Just solve that problem. All right, I we just, got six up. We got six on the line. Just solve that problem. Double A gap blitz. And looks. you want to put that secondary keep under running that? at that. You want to keep that secondary under that type you of see pressure. See how fast Christian Harris is. Draft Edron Cooper, fastest linebackers in the business. You can't have a conversation with him. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I can. I'm sorry. I'm solving problems. You're silly. I'm Who's, a problem solver. Double A gap blitzes, huh? That's all you got to show. What, what? Show double A gap. Get him to. Get him to. to Kill, 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 kill. Oh, look at us. We're not in the double A gaps anymore. Boom. <laughs> Trick just, you. He just dapped. Okay, so so um, I, I, I'll tell you what. There is a huge difference. First of all, you're going from a last place schedule to a first place schedule. There's a huge difference in the thought about this team. Tickets, everybody at the Texans, everybody's thoughts. You're about saying expectations. Think, the expectations. Will Anderson Jr. met the meeting yesterday. He says it's different. He said a bunch of guys want to come and play for the Houston Texans now. Yeah, it was a lot of the Provo, man. It was a lot of guys like, yeah, tell them I'm trying to come over there. Like, tell them, Miko, I'm I'm, I'm saying, but I'm like, Texas ain't for everybody, man. It's just a it's a it's a it's a different type of DNA you talk, you have to have to play here, man. It's a different type of character you have to have. Um, and you just gotta love football, man. And I, I think you know the front office and coach they do a really good job of choosing the guys that they want to be in here um, that you know can help change the culture and help keep uplifting the culture. Don't you love that? <sighs> that it's is not for so. Everybody. Wait a minute. It's not. This is not for everybody. Wait a minute. What? Wait a minute. Hold on. What? Let's pump the brakes just a hair. What bothers you about what he you said? Can, nothing bothers me about what. It's different here. It is. Because we're just so much better. Does no, that he, that's me? not what he said. Yeah, because you got to work harder. Play it again and, and stop it where you have it's a problem with what everybody. he said. everybody. Play it. Stop it where you think you have a problem with what he said. Stop yeah, it. Yeah, it was a lot of the Provo, man. It was a lot of guys like, yeah, tell them I'm trying to come over there. Like, tell them, Miko, I'm I'm, I'm saying, but I'm like, Texas ain't for everybody, man. It's just a it's a, it's a, it's a different type of DNA you, talk, you have to have to play here, man. It's- Stop. Okay. You were t- you were ten and seven. You you didn't After score being the a worst touchdown team against the Ravens. So what? Okay. You always bring that up. Uh, two for two games. You're not an elite organization no, he said yet. You, you got to have a different DNA to play for the Houston Texans. Yeah, because... Slow down. No, because D'Amico requires a certain mentality I, I, and certain attitude. You have to love football. Okay. There's a What's lot, wrong with that? There's If you get to the NFL, most... He didn't now, say, you listen. Most of the guys love football. No. You can't... Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, you're talking about some guys that are so talented and they don't give a rat's ass. Most of the guys... Lance, you don't make it at this level... At the, unless you love to play and you work your ass off. Football character is not as – it's not as – you think that's the case, but you, you don't the think most, that's the case. Uh, yes. Most of the guys in the NFL have football character. So, yes. but, but in basketball, no. Uh, Why? I don't think the Why highest is that? high percentage. Because, it, it, because you're coddled a hell of a lot more in basketball when you're younger than when you're – because you're, you've got to be a superstar to play basketball in the NBA. There's fewer jobs. There's fewer. There's five guys on the court. There's. there's it's. A, it's different. It's different. There's lots of guys who love the ends to the means who don't. Who are not going to put in the time. What I, Will is saying I, is basically, I was. Will is in, the defensive leader. I was in leader. that locker room for five years. No, but not this everybody one. had. Everybody loved football. A lot everybody of veterans. To play. A lot of veterans, and that was a long time ago, John. It, do, it doesn't matter. Oh yes, things no. have changed a lot in the ask, last fifteen and years. Ask guys now. You don't get there I unless do you work ta- your ass off. I do talk to guys all the time. They they tell across the board, college coaches and NFL personnel people tell me 
It's a lot different now. It's a it's changed drastically so with the iPhone generation. Fourteen teams made the playoffs this past season. Seven on each side. So do those. So the Texans' culture is much better yeah. than the rest. Slow he, down. He just Slow said, "Hold on down. a second. I don't think y'all are actually addressing what he's saying. He's not calling them one of the best teams. He didn't say we're better than the Ravens. All he said is it's not for everybody because they work. Football comes first. They work." There's a D'Amico mindset, which, to be fair, none of us know what that is. Yeah. We don't, we're not in a building. I can tell you this. Everyone at Alabama said, when I ask about Dallas Turner, and they go, well, he's he's great, but he's no Will Anderson. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, Will Anderson does push-ups for fun at night. and Like, he doesn't go out. All Will Anderson does is football stuff. C.J. Stroud is is very, very highly competitive. Like, there, I, I do think that they have they have changed the culture over there, and maybe maybe it's not for everyone. Yeah, now, but, now that's all Will knows. Will but, doesn't know anything else other than Alabama Nick Saban and his one year at the Texans. So maybe his perspective you, is you, a little smaller. Yeah, I mean, slow there. There's a lot of guys that like to work in the NFL. That's that's maybe that's not a, the guys who asked him. That's a well. Who was asking him? Say who well, said maybe, they want to well, come maybe, over? Maybe. Well, here's the deal. One of the guys that we think is one of the biggest pains in the ass in the NFL, that's all I'm seeing is Stefan Diggs working out right now. Dude is a worker, and he's just a pain in the ass. But you want to know something? That dude works hard. He's running right now. James, and tr- James and Harden to get works better. hard. James, James works hard and plays hard. He does both. Yeah, I don't James know what Stefan, how he plays. All I'm saying is that you don't have to have a different DNA to play for the Houston Texans. Guys in the NFL work their asses off to get at the highest level. You don't get there unless you work your ass off. Okay, it ain't for everybody. We got to slow down. <laughs> John, You're just trying to bring you know every John, little slap. You know nuts what John in is here. expressing is what everyone hates when they hear about heat culture. Oh, heat culture, heat culture. No one else works hard. Just you guys. It's pretty much yeah. what John is doing is what the, the rest Will of the Anderson NBA does. Is just trying to tell you it's not for everyone. We're, we're we do things different. I think the point is, what does Will Anderson know well, about? Well, Will Anderson got into the Texans. He's like, oh, this ain't, uh-uh. No, well, he this doesn't is know. no good when he came in. We ain't doing this. Well, he doesn't We're know. We're going to do this. He doesn't know. You just Will's told a dog. been there one year. Okay, you don't think the he's Ravens. been there one year on. in the NFL. And he is one setting the culture on defense. He's the culture setter. He's already the leader in the room, they say. Yeah. And I'm sure they're eight. he is. I mean, I'm you sure don't think the Ravens had a culture that wasn't? I guarantee you, being you can't, Ravens weren't for everybody with Ray Lewis and Ed Reed. I guarantee you that wasn't for everybody. Uh, you had to be a certain way to play for the Ravens. Yeah. At one point, you had to be a That's certain way I'm to play for the Steelers. Slow down. That's why I'm saying slow but down. But it's the mentality. You lost to Bryce Young last year. No. And the Falcons. They didn't say they're okay. Great no, team. no, no, no. Ray, Ray, Ray Lewis. And oh, by the way, Ray and Ed Reed came from Miami. It doesn't one of the best mean the standard the is not the standard. Yeah. They came from Ohio State. The, the rookie of the year and defensive rookie you came from. They came from great programs too. The standard's the standard. It doesn't mean their program is built up yet to be as good as the Ravens. That's not what he's saying. But their standard is maybe a little different. What they consider the standard is is different. Because we, why do we think the Ravens are any different than everyone else? I guarantee you, I think the Ravens are different. If you want to go play for the Ravens, you had to have a certain something. If there was a time where if you wanted to be a Steeler, there was it was known, man, you had to be a certain kind of guy to go be a Steeler. I think the point is that one way ain't the only way. And how the Texans do it, you may not fit the Texans, but you know you can go play for the Chiefs and but go But don't win you too. want right, but don't you want Will and Will Anderson thinking like that and say don't you want him building that culture to where he builds Raven culture? I would love if he built Raven culture here. I would love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I would love that, and too. And I think that's But his... uh, my point is, it ain't there. Okay, that was my point, is we have to slow down. Maybe, okay, may, maybe he's building it up, and maybe that's that's great. Yes, I would love Raven culture here. I would love that. But you got to, we got to, I know they won their division last year. You won't tell that to his face. Okay. You won't tell it to Will Anderson's face. <laughs> I'm not telling anything. What's Will. happened here? We've gone from... Overly positive Granado to realistic Granado and gone. That's not realistic real, Granado. Realistic Lance to overly positive Lance. What's going <laughs> yeah, on? Yeah, what happened? And I don't know. All what it happened. took was the Texans to have a winning season. And look at look at the Kool Aid drinker over here. <laughs> no, I, I I feel bad for poor teams. I know for poverty, poverty teams, quarterbacks, poverty yeah. teams. Yeah, I'm not there anymore. I'm new money. I made it. I made it up out of the. I made it up out of the, the rough neighborhoods of three and thirteen, three and fourteen. 
Well, for, sorry. For a season. I'm not pulling anybody else up with me either. You can stay there, you know, Falcons. You can stay there with your poverty franchise, you lost, uh, you Carolina. Lost, you lost. I'm not trying to bring you Stop up with me. Stop naming two teams you lost to. Yeah. Well. Yeah. You're not. A, you weren't as good as they were last year. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow. Bengals. I'm not pulling you up. Poverty Bengals couldn't even make a playoffs. Mm. Now say something. Yeah, but they lost their quarterback. Maybe so. That's they why. always lose their quarterback. Our Two quarterback. out of four years. I, you know what I like? I like quarterbacks that play football. Okay. Oh, aren't always hurt. Don't jinx them. <laughs> don't stop. What? Nine o'clock. ESPN ninety-seven. We got to stop. We got to stop right there. Hey, brokers are better. Where do you hear that? I'm going to tell you that. Well, I tell you what industry brokers are better in the mortgage industry. 75% of the public still doing it wrong. Here's how I did it. I just went and signed my papers for my house. Okay, here's your mortgage. Okay, there you go. Did I shop anything? No. Did I do anything before? No. Did I know what the answer? All of these things. No, I didn't know anything. I just bought the house. What a dumbass I am. If you want to shop your loan why would you buy something that's just as expensive as your home and not shop your loan i didn't because i'm dumb you don't be dumb give kent a call dream rate it's the ultimate mortgage hookup he is going to pair you with the best wholesalers in the nation he is saving people all the time literally thousands of dollars are you somebody that wants is in the home market mortgage market you don't want a quote. How about a quote, scenario quote? I don't know how much I can spend. I, let me let me see how much this house will cost with how much down and how much, uh, what are my monthlies going to be? Kent can do that for you. He He's really, really, really good at this. He's been doing it for 29 years. He's got kind of experience that you need when you are buying a home. Dream Rate, the ultimate mortgage hookup. 713-520-5626. 713-520-LOAN. Or 975loans.com. Tell Kent you heard it right here. Joined in studio right now by Eric Layden, old friend of the show. He and Lance, are you still you guys still doing that? No, we haven't podcast? done the podcast uh, off script. It was good. We won an award 
Uh, it was an award-winning the podcast. The what potties. The potties. We want a potty. Yeah, we want a potty. We want a potty. Uh, first year. It was our first year doing it. Yeah, first yeah, you year. Guys we, want want a, a potty. we want a potty. Yeah, yep. yeah. It was the uh, most impact on a on a baseball team and uh, and a championship culture. team and culture yeah. culture change. Mm. Eric Hart, our, our our hottest guest. So Cassie? as a as a big Rams fan, yeah, uh, yeah, Hassie Harrison. Hassie we had Hassie. Hassie. Yeah, we had hottest guest. Yep. We had coolest guest, Michael Kelly Jr. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. So he's cool. Camper. We have some, he, he, some good guests. Yeah, we did have a good guest. Braves fan, so he's already chirping at me. Mike yeah, uh, I, re- I retweeted. Somebody had his funny, the funny gift or uh, the funny little meme they created where it says, "It says Angel Hernandez." Like in your context, this call, miss call, miss call, miss call, call, call. And he ret- I, I retweeted that that somebody else sent, and he like retweeted and had some nasty comment about oh, Angel Hernandez. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah. because well, so y'all had like a moment. He's just dropping yeah. Twitter names yeah. on us now. Yeah, he's had a well, moment. Well, no, How Michael Kelly. Michael I was just saying. Kelly, oh, retweeted my tweet. <laughs> well, you? no, but he had a nasty comment about it. Did oh, he did. Because, yeah, he's a big Braves fan. Did you win most accident-prone co-hosts on a podcast? No, did not in 17. Oh, okay. No, yeah. but, yeah, that later was 17. Would, yeah, it was later. the next year that he hurt himself won, playing Frisbee yeah. golf. Okay. Right. Okay. And then I capped it off with the dislocated shoulder. Um, that's whenever I, you know, they gave me a lifetime achievement award. So mm-hmm. I was pretty excited about that. Yeah. So what are you in town for? Uh, in town celebrating a birthday, father-in-law's birthday. Okay. Eric um, is an actor. He's yeah. extremely famous. These people know. Um, you, you, you guys all know yeah, who Eric guys, is. Yeah, I don't Come think on. we need to do this again, do we? I don't do we? think we need to do this. You guys know. You've seen him on multiple shows. He's won a potty. Yeah, he's won a potty. What a potty. You said, hey, is this guy in jail again here on SVU? Who did he... You know, who did he murder can't now? Be, still mm-hmm. can't believe he murdered Rosie. Right, right. From At yeah. the Astro game uh, two nights ago, some guy was like, you're the mayor of Absaroka County. Took me about, you know, a which, few seconds to remember that Absaroka was that? County was the was the county in Longmire. <laughs> I was like, I am. <laughs> okay. and, and, and by the way, I have been at Astro games multiple times where people will yell, bring back the podcast. Yeah. You know, or people the love the podcast. Hole. Eric, oh, do you know people that, love the podcast. Yeah, they love love the podcast. Yeah. Do you know that Eric uh, helped the Astros win a championship when he would wear a blindfold? We just made a joke on the podcast. Like every time he was there, you know, you couldn't. Every time you were there, they couldn't well, they, score. Or yeah, whatever if I watched, if I, I said, watched, you should just wear yeah. a blindfold during yeah. the games. You can go to the games, but wear a blindfold. So he actually brought one to a game. And they won. So he brought it out like three times and they scored runs. And yep. like he would bring it out late in the game. It's like, you know, That's a superpower. Right. If you've if you've got yeah. to use this, only, use only tip, bring it out if you need to use it. When I it. needed Evan Gaddis to go yard in order to yeah. tie the game against the Yankees in game six, uh, you know, I pulled out the blindfold. And it Eric, worked. did your character smash Ruth? Ask him that. That's what Twitch wants to know. Uh, you did not. Well, well, we don't know what happened. We, you don't actually. know what happened. You know, Julia and I know what happened because we talked about it. Oh, you did? But, uh, well, you know, wouldn't just you two some... have had to have been there? You're an Ozark. Uh, yeah, but what did their characters? Did our though? characters. Did right, their characters. right, right, right. Even, do you, not you on play TV. the character. Yeah, but, right, they, right. but things happen off, like, not that was caught by the camera. That's right. But did they at any point? That's Eric right. was in Eric, Ozark. Eric, uh, let's be very clear. Eric did Eric not did smash not. Julia. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no I want to no, make sure this is, we get this on the mic. And that's not the question. Yeah, that's not the question. That's not it. I do think Carrie Stone and Ruth, Probably had relations. Wow. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, after the romantic dinner Not in episode one. That. Yeah. Um, and we did a little partying. Yeah. And the restaurant was closed and I cleaned up. Oh, and, that's uh, wow. You know, I mean, I just think that, you know, I think that's so why it was so happen. hard when I had to say goodbye. Um, and if you rewatch it and you look in her eyes, you can see yeah, they're getting they're see. getting wet. <laughs> the eyes. The eyes. Her <laughs> eyes are getting wet because she can see. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It's my bad. Del, no, no, no. We do this all the time. And Dell uh, always, like, he What'd always you think of this? Oh, yeah. I watched CJ's first Okay, pitch. have you ever thrown out a first pitch? I have. Yes, I have, have. Yeah, through a strike. Uh, but it was framed beautifully uh, by, by my catcher. Uh, yeah, he 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 went up and, and got to it before it because I think it yeah. would have been called low in the zone. Who well, caught Angel it? Hernandez Angel probably would have got a strike, a strike right. for sure. Wait, who caught yours? How could you not I can't remember? remember? Actually, because you're a monster you bla- no, Astros I know, fan. but you black out. Like I don't know how to explain it. So I'm on the field, and I'm I'm so nervous to go out there because the the PR girl who's like 20, she's like, "Are you gonna throw from the rubber? You don't have to." And I'm like, "I'm never gonna do this again. I'm going on the rubber. I'm digging my feet in, and I'm throwing for sure." And she was like, aim high. And Mike Moustakis, you remember Mike Moustakis? Yeah. So he's warming up, and he's just standing right next to me, throwing 
you know, ropes yeah. to like left field fence. And he's just like, hey, man, don't throw one, you know, like don't throw it in the crowd. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, thanks. That's the last thing I hear as I walk up. So I was so nervous I blacked out, but I did throw, I throw a, a great ball, perfect strike. No, 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 low, but I got, but I got framed. Yeah. CJ, I'm not sure about the form. Process uh, versus the form. result. The result's great. Yeah. Result is good. Yeah. I mean, it's like a did bad he throw golf from the rubber? swing. He did throw from the rubber, it looked like, but man, he shot putted it, yeah. which I thought was was He's, an interesting take. I don't work. know. I yeah. wonder if he was just trying to protect a shoulder, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you think there's anything? Because how do you know. not know how to throw a baby? Like that to me that, says that you don't have a father that was a good father. So that's this is what that's, I this is what when I, I see struggle kids with. that can't throw. Well, I I'm with not going to accuse his father of not being a good because he can play every. He actually he played great basketball, basketball great, player, great football player. Oh, and he player. hit home runs. Oh, yeah, that he hit a home that's what I'm saying. I, know, I think he can. I think it's protective. maybe his football motion. Maybe I think he's protective. Maybe he just didn't want to cut it loose, and he's just like. I'm just going to keep it right here oh, like yeah. throwing a dart. Yeah. Maybe it was like that. Maybe it was that. Yeah. Because well, actually, he did go yard in the celebrity he's softball good game. Of an he had a great swing. Too good of an athlete. Yeah, I that's think what, he's protecting it was shocking the shoulder. to me that the throw yeah. was, it didn't look great, but man, it was right on the money. It was. 60, that's our guy. Yeah. 60 yeah. feet, 6 inches. Yeah, that's no, our... I've done it. Have you done it? I, I have uh, No, I have no. not done I've it. I've never thrown it. You've also shot. I've seen the shot. National Anthem. Yeah, Oh, wow. Can yeah. we get a taste of that? Do yeah. we oh. have that on tape? Uh, no. Yes, we do, as a oh, matter of fact. I think we should probably try let's to cue that up, you... just because I've never heard yeah, it. Yeah, let's hear what you think about that. Yeah. We do have, is it is the rice? It's, it's, it takes too long. No. Oh, it's about just, 30 seconds. I just need, like, two bars. <laughs> I don't need the whole thing. I just need it two bars. It won't take long. If it was a World Series song? if it was a World Series prop bet, it would have... No, he hasn't found it yet. Okay. All okay. right. Well, when he does... Yeah, no, no, man, going. I would love in to. radio. We don't put headphones by the microphones. Oh, yeah, right. oh my bad. Yeah, yeah my bad. See oh. by the dawn's early light, what so proudly we okay, hailed at the twilight's last gleam, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the yeah, red hearts we watched <laughs> were so gallantly <laughs> That's disrespectful. And Rosie O'Donnell were very disrespectful during the. Uh, no. I stood up. I didn't kneel. But she didn't kneel. She just grabbed her crotch and spit. I didn't do that. I swing it pretty quick. I'm not sure how many chair turns you would have gotten there on the voice. I'm yeah. not sure that would have gotten a chair turn. What's a no. chair turn? You know, like on the voice. Like they're oh, all no. backwards. And then when they hear the voice they that they want, they turn if they oh, want that voice. Like yeah. yeah, I don't think they would have gotten the chair turn. Oh, my God. No, it's Jack no. Renato. Yeah. I think Simon would That is absolutely dreadful. 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 <laughs> what do you do for a living? Because it's not this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he would have hit you with that. <laughs> uh, 913, Eric Layton in studio with us here on ESPN. Right, let's get to some 97.5 and 92.5 yep. on the other side. Right now, I'm talking about Houston Safe and Lock, and the lock part is the one that is really, really critical for you and a lot of people here. Like, Derek has told me, like, the, hey, man, the people are coming in for the lock thing because it is really important that you are able to lock your businesses up. Multiple doors, you need PIN codes or smart device credentials or key cards or fobs or if, if you're having a problem – but maybe it's e your your locks are easy to pick or easy to get in your doors. He's got the solutions for that. A wide range of commercial property and business access systems that you can choose from. Derek and his guys are experts at this. They're going to make it so that you have the master key system that's perfect for your business, that you know what's coming and going. If you have multiple doors or multiple properties I mean, this is the way to go. You can keep track of everybody coming and going. If it's just a regular key, you got no idea, okay? But when you get into the access control systems that he's got, you're going to know exactly what's going on at your business. So give him a call, 713-522-5555, or go to 975safe.com.
So if you are looking for um, a pickup truck right now, there is a great deal going on with your GMC dealer over at Gulf Coast Chevy Buick GMC. Lance Zerline, you know, when you're buying a GMC truck, you're getting professional grade. You know that. But a GMC Sierra 1500, they are built to work. And also, it's a great-looking truck. So you get the best of both worlds. Looks great. Also built to work for you. And right now, you can get a 2024 GMC Sierra 1500 model with that Turbo Max or 5.3 liter V8 engine at only 1.9% APR financing for up to 72 months for well-qualified buyers. We're talking about 1.9% financing, which is well below the national number for 72 months. So if you want a new truck, I suggest you visit my dealership at Gulf Coast Chevy Buick GMC. It's the only place that we buy and lease our vehicles, and it's definitely a spot you're going to love. GMC, we are professional grade. You are listening to Houston's longest-running sports radio morning show. From the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's John and Lance. Holy crap. Did you see yesterday the the pro-Palestinian protesters blocking Chicago airport, the freeway to Chicago's airport, and, and the Golden Gate Bridge today, the Brooklyn Bridge? So no one can... So you can't... You can't you can't uh, drive on the Brooklyn Bridge today. You couldn't get to the airport in Chicago yesterday. Well, what am I going to do now? What? You're not. Are you oh, in yeah. New York? I'm not. In, that's right. So no. you're fine. Is this how you guys were protesting? Didn't you guys? Didn't you guys? Uh, Sag. Your your Screen SAG protest. Guild? Yeah, no, no, no. Our our our, our protest didn't take us <laughs> to the Brooklyn Bridge. There weren't many many flags burning. Uh, no, it was a little bit more peaceful. <laughs> Most of us just went for the cliff bars. You didn't block any streets. <laughs> went for the cliff bars. Yeah, they had great snacks at the strikes. How yeah, stressful trees. was it to be to to be in the middle of a strike and have no work going? Well, it was stressful. That's why everybody went for the food and the free sunblock. Yeah, you know, you were yeah. just um, you know, you were just walking away. Although I will tell you. Uh, you, you get your steps in, you know, when you're walking around Disney every single day, uh, Picking you know, them. yeah, you're, you're, uh, you're, you got your steps on. So. so let me ask you this. What do you, um, what is there before we get to the Astros? What are you working on? You have something going on right now? So, uh, your favorite character of mine, Scott Anderson, yep. uh, back with Bosch, From Bosch doing a couple yeah. more episodes nice. on their, on their spinoff, which has uh, been a lot of fun. Always good to do that. And then, uh, I've got a couple shows I'm selling. Yeah, really? so trying to move over into the uh, producer development, uh, you know, behind the camera, so I can make that John Granado money. What are they? What are they? What are you selling? Uh, I've got a non-scripted bourbon show. Mm-hmm. Uh, You've been working on which that. I've been working on for a long time. You reached out to somebody close. on Astros Twitter who's a bourbon girl, uh, right? I did. I did. Yeah, yeah. we spoke. Um, and uh, yeah, so I've, I've got a great show about bourbon, non-scripted. For bourbon lovers and just competition, we got a show bourbon like show. I mean, you reached out to a girl, but we got a guy on here that does oh, a bourbon he's show. Oh, massive! Yeah, oh, who's yeah. that? He has, um, I I, he's got a show. Tell he's got a show on here that people come from all over the like, you know. Great. Well, put me in touch. Yeah, I will. Put I mean, me he has touch. a big thing where it's tickets are great. You know, they have five hundred to six. Walter White right, was but, here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Well, in character. Brian, Brian Cranston. Brian Cranston, no, Br- oh, Brian okay. Cranston okay. was. All right. Not yeah. Scott Anderson's here. Scott yeah. Anderson's here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian Cranston was here. Yeah. Yeah. I got a I got a half hour comedy about Little League baseball because I am in it right now with uh-huh. a nine and eleven year old, so I know what goes on with yeah. the fathers yeah. of Little yeah. League baseball. That actually and it would be insane. pretty funny. Yeah. yeah. And so it's it's think in the world of um of um Danny McBride. Dad's yeah. of, uh but so that like hasn't an R rated comedy, but Little League. Yeah, that hasn't been done. Um, well, it has been literally. I mean, uh, bad news bears, but to but the parents, the way the families are so and travel ball, like that's waiting to have a comedy oh, made yeah. about travel so ball have, baseball. Yeah, yeah. So it's we're there. Uh, I'll tell you what script I read yesterday, which you, you might get a kick out of. Did you guys see the Chad Powers uh, little uh, you know deal that Eli Manning did when he yeah, dressed yeah, yeah, up, yeah, yeah, when yeah. he dressed up as yeah, Chad yeah, Powers yeah. and yeah. went to tryouts? Get ready for a TV show. Because oh, it's coming. Really? Is it really? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think I might. I didn't sign an NDA. I'm all right. I can talk about this. Yeah. So they've got a script out uh, for Chad Powers. Chad Powers. Yeah. Yeah. Glenn Powell playing Chad Powers. You know Glenn Powell. Who is he? He's like blowing up right now. He was like the Maverick character in the last Ma- in the last Top Gun. You know the young, hot, good looking one. Uh, Texas also, guy. Oh yeah, he's yeah. from Texas. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. in the movie with Sydney Sweeney. 
Um, y- anyone yeah. but you, I think is what it's called, something like that. That's right. Yeah. Yep. You're exactly is right. Is Sydney Sweeney going to be in it? I don't know. Don't I, care then. Yeah. yeah. If uh, Sydney Sweeney's in it, then no, yeah, so he, no, there's a hook. He plays Chad Powers. Okay. Uh, so Eli's a producer on that. Um, yeah. So I got things going. So things are cooking. It's good. That's good. great. Good yeah. for you. Good yeah. deal. What are you doing in Houston right now? Uh, I told you, I'm here for my father-in-law's John 80th does, birthday. Oh, yeah. We've already been through this. He doesn't <laughs> listen. Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm trying to find – I was just looking at Travis Kelsey and, oh. and Taylor Swift. And that's Coachella. understandable. Wasn't paying yeah, attention that's to understandable. You. That's right. All right, yeah. so Astros, um, yep. John famously – Dell, if there's one thing John famously said before the year about the Astros, what would it be? He said this is going to be the best team in Astros history. Mm. Best team in Astros history. Now, he's not giving up on that. I'm okay. not giving up. Okay. He's not giving up on that. I'm, I'm not as confident, okay. but I'm not giving up on it. Okay. 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 So, so far, mm-hmm. your thoughts. We haven't talked to any baseball. You and I don't think have talked to any Astros baseball no. other than just a snarky text here or there. Give us your thoughts on it's early, it's injuries, or what are, you, what are your thoughts on Astros right now? Uh, my thoughts are the – And you I'll watch be, them clearly, all. From, I watch from, them all. I watch California, them all, and yeah. I was there the other night. Uh, thank God for a W, uh, and I'll go tonight. But, I, you know, clearly we've been hit with the, with the starting – pitching injuries right. so that's that's thank an you. issue right we, we, that, that's it um we've got a glaring glaring hole at first base that we have to deal with um i just don't think a world series caliber team can have a bray and singleton as your options at first base even with the lineup that we have um so i i feel like that has to be addressed at some point um and then but the the problem the biggest issue for me and it happened last night is that the guy you basically spent your whole purse on right the guy you gave your bag to can't get two outs. Yeah. I mean, he just can't do it, and he hadn't done it all year. And, and we haven't put him in a lot of positions to actually come in and get saves, and I get that. But at the same time, the guy has not been able to come in and get outs. Get guys out. And that's a problem, mm-hmm. you know? For, and that's Because you, you gave him the bag instead of, like, maybe three or four guys like the Rangers did. And you didn't hate it at the time when they signed I Hayden. didn't hate it. I, I loved, loved it, it at the time. Right. I loved I love it at the time. It doesn't change the fact that— And I still like that, it. Right. But—, but but I don't know what's going on. I know these guys are so fragile, a lot of these closers, and they have to be in the right situation or their, like, head gets all messed up. I don't like those kind but, of closers. But well, the thing is, is, like, they haven't put him in that position to close. Lance but, thinks it's the the, the uh, pitching coaches are about to go or, or should go. I mean, this so, is two – we're going on two years Look now. what Strom's did in – look yeah. what Strom's what did in, in Arizona. Yeah. You know who's giving up the least runs in the league? Diamondbacks. I don't yeah. think it's yeah. – no, I think a pitching coach should be right now his, – his, he should be on the hot seat because yeah. you've got a wide variety of, and I'm not even getting into the injury stuff. I think, you know, I sure. do wonder if maybe the years of spin rate and curveballs and all that stuff is maybe taking a toll on some of their arms, but that's just, you know, throwing out a guess. But I do think Christian Javier is not the same guy as when Strom was here. Of course, the, the year, that's not entirely fair because he had a great, great year under Miller. But, you know, his job is to fix this. His mm-hmm. job is to fix Hunter Brown. His job is to fix... Josh Hader and and Ryan Presley. And I don't see a lot of guys getting fixed. And jo- my dad was a professional coach. And what happens is eventually, if things don't get fixed, you're accountable. That's and right. they will move on from you. And I 100% think that his job right now should be teetering because the pitching is not good enough. If Hunter Brown goes out and gets his wig split again today, then I don't know what you do with him anymore. I mean, he's almost an automatic loss when you throw him out there. If it if it happens again, yeah, you got to send him down. And somebody's getting sent down for Verlander on Tuesday. It's too early for that. Right so, now. but but who's going to go early down? To send Hunter down. Yeah. So who's who do you well, send? You do you send this guy though, who John? Arigetti down? Because Arigetti, now granted, he had a really rough inning, but he looked way better. He at least fixed some stuff. Yeah. And anybody that that K's Acuna three times it, has got something. It's going to be. It's it's not gonna. It's not gonna be four starts in for Hunter Brown. They're gonna give him. A, they're gonna give him a bigger leash. They they almost have to. I mean, but what if you're doing damage? What if he's mentally I, not where he needs to be? What good are you doing by continuing to bust up his psyche and let him get his ass kicked? I mean, if it happens again, is that you like that? No, no. But it's not like. His, what about bullpen? Send him to the bullpen. That's a possibility. Yeah, I think that's that's probably a bigger better possibility. Probably because so. guess what? They need a lot of help there too. Well, they need a ton of help there, but I also think that you can't look at this like one a normal year. This is not a year where we're, you know, five games above 500. This isn't a game. We're not even even. No, two but, games under 500. So, I mean, yeah. you you now are really messing around with like, you know, we're going to have to go on some serious runs. It's early. 
I know it's early. It's only a tenth through the season. So, but but let's see if Hunter Brown. What is the well, over under? Do you night? want Cornell or do you want Hunter Brown on the mound? Okay, I'm just going to give you an over under on tonight. Does Hunter Brown go more than three innings tonight? Yes. Okay. Why yeah. are you so confident in that? Yes, he's going to. Why? Because he's got a lot of rest. He only worked a third of an inning last game. How much did you think rest Two is the thirds. reason? You think he was tired? That's why he only maybe, went a third of an inning? Maybe. You don't know. Yeah, I do know because he only went like three and what? What did he go in the I've in his first start? I got confidence in Hunter Brown tonight you better, going four innings. You better relax on cosplay Verlander. That, okay. guy, that guy's been terrible. No, I'm, he's really been awful. Yeah, I mean, really been awful. There's no question about that. But but they're not they're not they're not sending him down right now. It's it's way too early. So now if he goes to the bullpen too and he struggles there and can't get anybody out, then you know, yeah, there's there, he's a real possibility to be. Did you see where Forrest Whitley got people out in the minor league game the other day? I did one in a row. That was pretty cool. One in a well, row. Well, if we're gonna talk about the minor leagues, I I don't look. I don't know how hard it is to play first base, <laughs> but I also don't know how. Like, Loper Fido has 13 home runs in, like, nine games. He's also <laughs> struck out half the time. It doesn't matter. He's like Aaron Judge. He's yeah. a machine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll put him in the lineup. But what is Abreu doing? He's batting about 103? Yeah. Yep. Okay. We can't use and with, 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 up by from the way, 87. Like, up from 87, okay. though, to be yeah, fair. that's true. Now, l- last night, Pena had an error, but I teach my nine-year-old to get off the back to yes. save a run. Right. Yes, that was what is Abreu, Abreu doing? Abreu. Staying there, he's got no glove anyway. It was a... So I'm just, I, I, you I'm know. I'm so over Brave. That was a, Bagwell Lytics is going to get you on that one. Yeah, that's that Bagwell. One. John, you can't use, oh, Loperfito striking out a lot when the options are Singleton and Abreu. No. I thank yeah. you. Thank you. Abreu. No, I'm, I'm all for it, but guess what? That's $58 million, 58 and a half on the bench. So you like fifty eight million on the field no, playing? No, I don't. But I'd rather I, have that on the bench. I mean, you have to eat when, it at you, some point. Well, yeah, it's better than eating. It, it, it's just so bad. It's just so bad. And Singleton is not the end. They got to take Singleton away from him because I don't know why he puts him out there. He pinch hits Singleton for people. Yeah, he's awful. He's awful. Why are you pinch hitting him? He's he was, he was he was I think he was one for nineteen last year in pinch hits. He's awful. Yeah, what I mean, I'd rather doing? I'd rather pinch hit Greg Kessinger or you yeah know, somebody. Yeah, Corey Chelks. Of course, you know that he doesn't play first base, but really, either to Singleton. <laughs> so well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I think Loper Fido, just as an overall athlete, could go play first base. He's been playing down in the minors. He's played first, played outfield. He plays, you know, he plays a wide variety of positions. But if you're just going to have a left hand bat, now he they want him playing, and and Dana Brown addressed it and said, yeah, all that power is great. We want him striking out a little bit less. If you, but if you just want a power, if you want. A potential home run off the bench as a pinch hitter, Lil Profito is a probably a better option than Singleton. John, when you designated this the best Astro team in history, did you take into account they didn't have a major league first baseman on the roster? They did a, a, a possible Hall of Famer in Jose Abreu. Ooh, Ooh whoa, whoa, whoa! I just whoa, whoa. if Dana He's Brown kind of ruining that whole Hall of Fame thing. Dana Brown says we want a guy that strikes out less, so you, so you'd rather a guy that just rolls it over to first. Yeah, right. That's and a Bray you. Right. That's less than that's striking out. Less sure. than, yeah. Sure. Okay. I mean, great. Yeah. I mean, the first baseman could slip and fall and he could get the first. <laughs> that's true. It's better than It would only be out. better if he was rolling one over to first base and he himself was playing first base. That's true. Yeah. He could hit to himself. <laughs> yeah. He would be in good shape. I, they're not going to get make any drastic changes yet. They're just not. I mean, and he, they still, you heard Dana Brown. And Joe Espada, we believe in him. He's going to hit. He always starts slow. But do you He's think they were hit. lying? Do they really believe in him? Yeah. I mean, Altuve's hitting well over 400 right now. No one right has now. my opinion because I don't believe oh, in him. Oh, Altuve is. Uh, I know. Why are you bad. saying anything about Altuve when you're talking about Jose Abreu? My point is, is that you've got guys hitting. We still can't win because we've we're put, <laughs> you know we just we've got too big a hole. Well, I mean, right. Jordan had a chance to. He did. That was a big chance he to did. knock runs yep. in. They had a couple opportunities, yep, but, did. Yeah, but but the other pitchers Jordan's did their job great. enough, and then Hater to do this. It's been like four bad outings for him this year. That's just it will get better. But you're right. Right now, they're not in a position where they can fade all this. At some point, and I brought this up before the season started. I know we're all ALCS seven years in a row and all that, and that's true. But they were, they were just a a. They were a bad run by the Rangers at the end of the year and an unbelievable road run for the Astros from being eliminated from the playoffs at all. The Astros were almost not even in the playoffs. They needed 
help in the last weekend to get there and to play their balls off on the road. They were a terrible home team last year. I mean, dreadful home team. So far, it's not a whole lot better at home. But I could also flip that switch and tell you that the Rangers were, you know, one inning away from not winning that series and getting yeah. to the World Series and winning True. it all. And they were a terrible home team because the Strohs beat them yeah. at home all every game. It, now, regular season, they were terrible. They so, were against the Astros. So. Though. But yeah. you know, I mean, you, you can Astros own yeah, yeah, you can you can look at that two different ways. No, that's true, that's true. But I'm just you know, that's why it shouldn't be a complete surprise, especially once you factor in the injuries that the Astros. Now we're used to just people stepping in and stepping up. Oh, look, JP France. Right. Oh, look, he's really good. Who knew yeah. about JP France? This year, well, we're no Blanco though. Actually, we're yeah, no Blanco. Yeah, he, yeah. Did it again. he looks great. Okay. And Joey Loperfito. Well, he doesn't. Time for you to talk Exist about. Exist as a major he, leaguer. Uh, he, he might, though. He might. Vanderford is what you got to talk Vanderford about. Vanderford Air. Air conditioning. We needed to get some in here this morning. It was not great. Maybe they need to call Vanderford Air and have them come out and check the chillers. I know this much. Vanderford Air is great when it comes to diagnosing what your issue is, doing it quickly. They are going to be at your home within 24 hours when you make the call. There's never any charges for emergency charges or overtime charges. They're simply there to get the work done. If you have a big install being done, a brand new system, they get out there as early as you can possibly allow them, and they can start getting the process done. Brand new lines are put in here. New new lines can be cut into rooms if you need one or two extra uh, vents and get cooler. They, they run the, the heat load in all the rooms to make sure that the rooms are cooling properly. If not, they can cut a new line in there. And when it comes to fixing a, a concern with your air conditioning, they're really good at diagnosing what it is and then giving you a very fair price. And sometimes what they'll do for you is say, look, this is the price to fix it, but your unit's a little older. So if you want to replace it, we can do it for this much. Here's our financing option. So it's a great opportunity for you at uh, my good friends over at Vanderford Air to get cool before the summer heat really sets in. 281-557-COOL. That's 281-557-COOL. All right, time to talk about Doc Linville right now. I mean, I've gone, I don't know how many times. I've gotten the PRP three times. I'm going to go back again. The PRP is awesome because it just stimulates the growth of your hair. Uh, the neo grafting is a lot more into it. You got to move the hair from the side to the top. Did that. That was an easy process, though. The whole thing is just so simple. It's in, 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 
listen, guys, I don't know. Well, I don't know about doing all that. I mean, why? Why would you, if you, especially if you're 20, 30, 40 years old and you've got a hairline that's going back or you've got a big bald spot in the back, you need to, to go do this. It's so much better to have. There's no, ask Eric, there's no superheroes on television that have a bald spot. None. <laughs> not I mean, one. Not one. Not one. Zero. Yeah. So do you want to be a superhero or you want to be a villain? Which one are you? Okay, because women will look at you like you're a villain or, sorry, you're just not. I, every guy in the leading role has a great full head of hair. And so you need that if you want to be an actor or if you want to just be a great guy in, in, in regular life, too. That's why I did it. 975hair.com. 975hair.com. You're back in the Veritex Community Bank Studios with John and Lance. On ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. No, no, right, right, right. Yep. 937 ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. 713-780-3776, the number to hang out with us here. How did you feel? Are you a Rockets fan, too? Not. You're not? No. 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 You're a Texans fan, though. I am a Texans fan. I mean, Lance will tell you, I, I, I get on the bus. I get on the bus. I mean, I think that, you know, uh, the bus is rolling a little quick right now. You yeah. know, the, train, the train's done. getting Everybody. to the... Yeah, he was off. He out. got on a Rams bus uh, for a while, and then... But it is fun to watch the Texans play right now. Yeah, it's really well, fun. It, it sucked for I mean, all of us. Only John and I actually have baggage and scars from it. You just get off and on whenever it's nice. It's like a yeah. little trolley. It's yeah, a, it's a trolley. It's just a Texans trolley. You get off and on. No problem. Yeah. When they're losing, I, I pull the little string <laughs> up on the top. Ding, ding. I pop off. Do you now respect Eric less because of his uh, attitude towards the Texans, John? Yeah. I, I, and, uh, and Lance? Yeah, absolutely. But I've already known about it. Okay. Yeah, but I think we live in a time, right? I didn't time, have right? that much respect for him before. Well, yeah. you don't respect a lot of people. No, so, I don't. Yeah. So yeah. there's that. Yeah. I, I mean... You know, aren't we at a time now where, like, you you know, with fantasy and stuff, you, yeah. you, you're really, like, more of a fan of players than that's you are teams. That's what it's teams. turned into, yeah. You know, that's kind of what it's turned into. Yeah. So, I'm in a, I'm in a pool every year where I have three NFL teams that I that I pick, and, uh, you know, those are my teams that year. Oh, all right. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, so you get them if the, – how does that work? Most so wins? It, so, it's just most wins. That's right. Oh, and okay. It's a, it's, a, it's a draft. So it's a Everybody, draft? Yep, it's a draft. There's always two teams left off. And uh, and you have three, and it's at the end of the day, at the end of the season, Ooh, it's just most like wins. It's really great. It's yeah, great. we've that's been doing cool. it for about twelve years. That's cool. Ten yeah. guys. And yeah, you... ten guys, ten thousand dollars, three teams. Eric sounds like he, Eric sounds like he has a Twitter account called like Stafford Muse. You're that. You're one of those guys who roots for the players. Stafford Muse. Cup Muse, he'd, he'd be one of those types who, yeah. just, who just tweets about his favorite player. That's right. So, like, it might be the Bills one season. Cup it might be, uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, whoever got the Texans last year as one of the last picks probably won your league. You're looking at him. You did. I did take the Texans. I took the Texans late in the second round. In the late second in round? in the second round, wow. yeah. Wow. And, uh, and, and, yeah, second we did. Second round? Wow. Well, now, keep in mind, so there's 10 guys. So, the way it works is, like, if you have the first pick. Snake. Yeah. Well, no, it's not a snake because oh. that still isn't even. So basically, we did it with a like a computer. Basically, lays it out. So like, you can choose your whoever wins the year before chooses their draft position the next year, oh, okay. and then so on and so forth down based on what order you were in. Uh-huh. And so you can pick first, but then your next pick might not be twenty two, and then like twenty seven. Oh wow! Or so if you pick say like fifth, you might be thirteen and twenty, or mm-hmm. eighth, twelfth. And 17. Oh, that's neat. So it's, yeah. So you just have to, you have to be real strategic about where your draft position is. So you're looking to see, all right, if I draft fourth, if, if I feel like all those teams are going to be in the 12 win category, you know, but you really got to hit on that second and third pick. So uh, where did you pick last year? Uh, so we picked the Texans. Was, no. Yeah. What was your first pick? What? Oh, I think we went five. Five. Uh, and we went with uh, San Francisco. Or yeah. might have been four. San Francisco was yeah. still there at five. Yeah, it was there at four. I think we were four. Oh, four. And then and then I got the Texans in like the late. Did you teams. win it? No, we came in uh, second. Who was yeah. your other team? Our third team was who was our third team Saints. last year? Saints. Might have been the, yes, it was the Saints actually. You're exactly right. Because it felt like a Saint type. I usually text well, you, you every once in a while. Good. Yeah, you did. And, and I'll text you and say more wins between these two teams. Yeah, yeah. I've got uh, and that's before. usually for that. Point. Well, the so. Texans exceeded more than anybody. Yeah, they were huge. They were no. fun they were to watch. Favorites. And they are but for fun you to, to take them that are... early. Everybody must have laughed at you. They did. Yeah, they did. It's weird because right now it's more like the Rockets definitely were much better. 
but it didn't it, it didn't do I mean the Texans went to the playoffs. So in the offensive and rookie defensive players of the year, a guy who could have been coach of the year. So the Texans right now and had a good off season from a free agency standpoint. The Texans right now, this is as excited as the people have been about the Texans in obviously a long time. Um, it's weird though, because Rockets are on the way up, Texans are on the way up, but the Astros right now are just not off the launch pad yet. It's not the first time this has happened with the Astros early in the season, but Right now is different because just the number of injury to pitchers. I have a football question for you because you guys know more than me. But it, it, it feels like now, right, you have to, in order to be a Super Bowl contender, if you don't have, let's say, Patrick Mahomes, right, mm-hmm. or Tom Brady, you have to have a quarterback on a rookie deal so yes. that you can build up around him. Yep. And so you essentially have to hit on that rookie quarterback and you then you have to hit on you know uh, you gotta have uh, receivers you got to yeah. well, sure but you have the money in the cap space to yes. build around that guy well and that's and why so the fact that they hit on him yes. with a coach they could do the Stephon Diggs move then they can do the Stephon Diggs and they have so they essentially have a window right now yeah Daniel Hunter no that's hundred percent right is now is when you spend money that typically is not what smart teams do you don't you don't spend on other teams free agents but you can do that you can take that chance when you have a rookie. Right. right. Yes. Right. However, Patrick Mahomes is getting paid. Tom Brady got paid. Peyton Manning got paid, and with the salary cap, with salary more salary cap restrictions than you got now because the salary cap is 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 expanding. Although the quarterback salaries are getting higher, if the quarterback can out, if you get the right guy, he can outplay that. Even when you're paying them, it's hard though. But then you get I mean, guys that want to come play with him, so are willing to take less. It, or you get some, a Tom Brady situation where he's willing to take or less. Or your general manager is really good and knows how to draft second, third, fifth well, that's rounders. The whole sure. key. Remember, yeah. I mean, how that Seattle team, the Legion of Boom, was put together with a great, Schneider. Did and remember, that was a rookie. By the way, Russell's on a rookie contract. With yes, he was that. It, yeah. He was, but and they, they did an unbelievable job drafting. They got, yeah. Brownie, yeah, uh, Brownie came from the CFL. Richard Sherman. First round pick with uh, Earl. But, yeah, they built up. They built that team through the draft. Yes. But the Texans right now are building their team through the draft. Well, it's unusual because they're building draft, but also uh, a high-profile trade, a high-profile free agency move in Daniil Hunter, you know, some other good free agency moves. So they're kind of doing a little bit of both, but it's an unusual go-for-it-now type of mentality that you typically would have never seen after the last – after the previous three years with the Texans, in one year to change your mindset about how you can operate, that's that's rare. Teams who are going to try to copy that mode, it's not going to work. Right. Because, unless you find C.J. Stroud. Because Serio had to do something well in the draft in order to have C.J. make that big of an impact right away. Yeah. I mean, you can't have done nothing. Look what Bryce well, Young's Nico doing. Collins. And, right? Mm-hmm. So, right. I mean, he had pieces. Like, he had done well in the draft. Yeah. I mean, he... He did really yeah, well. Yeah, he's done well. well. So, leading up to... Right. Nico Collins became a good pick well, last year. Well, and so did um, Stingley. Yeah, became a, Tank, became a yeah. Tank. good pick last year. Now, Tank became... Was a good pick, yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, he's a great pick. Yeah. That was a great pick. So... Now, we'll find out whether or not Kenyon Green is. And he said... Yesterday, D'Amico said, by the way, for those of you who didn't hear, D'Amico said Kenyon Green would be uh, vying for a starting job on the offensive line. We'll find out whether or not um, he's going to do that. Uh, are you ready for News of the Weird? Sure. Yeah. You've done it before, right? I Sure. Yeah, I can improv this. Let's go. Oh, no. John's going to read you a series of, of stories, stories. Okay. that some are uncomfortable, some you can't believe people actually did this. Okay. Yeah. You know. Um, True or false them? Well, sometimes he just asks, would you like to stick your hand in a bucket full of bees and, oh, while okay. somebody, right. Right. you know, while gorilla right. chews off your leg? Yesterday you know, like, was a guy. Things right. where you wouldn't say yes. Right. Okay. Got it. So yesterday it was a guy who eats poo. He was a, mm. a, a yeah, he was some kind of a city official yeah. in Spain. Mm. And, and they kicked him out. Poo, and they kicked him out. And like, should I you, thought it was kind of unfair. Just should you be kicked poo. out? And I think that that's poor decision making. That'll get you kicked out. Well, it depends. I mean, do you have poo on your mouth and in, 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 in your teeth when you walk to work? Because if you're doing it on your own time, I think that's fine. Well, and, that, that's and that fine. was what John that's what yeah. said. I think yeah. it's a little hard. Yeah, but, but, it's the, a but once the video thing. leaked, it leaked. Yeah. Yeah. Once the video leaked, it leaked. Uh, it's, really can do about it. it's a religious thing. Could Is be. Is that what I heard? Yeah, it could be. You never know. You, you never know what See, religion. We have Del here. When something falls through the cracks Del's like that. there to catch it. Uh, but right now, catch underdog. Underdog fantasy. So... Your playoff season is here, right? Looks like Giannis is not going to start the playoffs. So 
What is that going to mean for me? It means I'm going to go higher on Chris Middleton's points in the first game, or I'm going to look at, you know, I'm going to look at any number of players. Rebounds can go higher. Points can go higher. That's going to have a direct impact on my high and low. The same thing could be the case for you. You could take a look at some of these playoff series. Is Luka going to really go off in the playoffs? Is he going to make a statement? How does Anthony Davis do in the playoffs? You know, you're watching the playoffs and you're going higher or lower on some of these statistics, and they offer a huge number of stats. I mean, everything you can possibly imagine uh, for your for your choosing, and you only have to choose between two and five players. That's it. You do a max of five, you do a minimum of two, and you're going to win multipliers of your original play. You can win up to 100 times your original play if you're utilizing some of their boosters that they have as well, which are harder to win, but they hit all the time. Make sure that when you download your app, you use promo code Lance for your first deposit because they're going to give you, they're going to match up to $100 of your first deposit. That's Underdog Fantasy. It's the best app that you can possibly use to play along with the sports that you are watching. It's Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code Lance. You must be 18 or older and present in the state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms and conditions apply. If you feel like you have a gambling problem, call 1 800 Gambler. Go to ncpgambling.org. All right, time to talk about Artisan Grange. My man Chase just texted the show. He wants to get in on your your uh, your little league thing. Okay, he th- he feels that's his calling. He can help you out with that. Okay. So so uh, just uh, just an aside. Chase is a guy. He and Wayne, uh, they they brought Artisan Grange. They brought Canstead and Dew Blend. If you dip, and you got that tobacco between your cheek and gum, it's dangerous. There's nicotine. It's ugly. People hate it. Ruins your teeth. All kinds of negatives about chewing tobacco. Here's the deal. How about hemp in a pouch made of hemp? Same flavors that you get with your dip, but you, it's safer. There's CBD oil in it. CBD American Shaman is carrying it. They love it. They say, you know what? It, this is this is our kind of product because it's helpful. You don't spit, and you don't have the dirt, tobacco all over. You're not in danger in your life. It's the way to go. If you dip, let's go. Go to 975dip.com. Change your life. 975dip.com. Sense. Yep. CBD, it. yeah, you swallow it swallow instead it of spitting, Eric. That's what you do. All right, time to talk about um, here's what's going on in the world, Eric, and you right. you can give me. John Wayne Bobbitt, we remember him? Mm, yeah. Lorena Bobbitt cut sure. off his manhood, yep. mm-hmm. right? Uh, John Wayne Bobbitt has also lost his toes now mm. due to toxic water at Camp Lejeune. Do you see all these commercials for Camp Lejeune? 
No. Yeah. You see, yeah. It's been out all forever. kinds of it's been it's been going on forever. Yeah. Is John Wayne Bobbitt lost more digits than anyone you know? Uh well, is each toe one digit? Yeah, and and yeah, do we two toes? Have, how many toes? He's lost multiple toes. Have apparently. we confirmed that he didn't replace his manhood with one of the toes? He did. He did replace his no, manhood. No, he did actually. With, but, well, he still with a lost toe? It. but he still lost it. No, okay. it was, uh, and, and he it, did a porn. Oh God. Okay. Oh, he lost all ten toes. All ten. Oh, he's. Oh the yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, mean, I was going to say ja- eleven. Jason Pierre Paul. Yeah, he does with his. the firecracker. But if you lose all ten toes, you're... well, ten is it ten plus one or ten plus three? Oh, it's eleven. It's eleven. Well, I didn't know if she took three. Oh, no, no, she, she took one. Just she one. Took one. Okay. She took okay. one. She didn't take three. All right. Okay. She took one. All right. Yeah, that's 11 person. digits. That's, that's a worst. lot of digits. What a bad person yeah. she was for that. Okay, yep. so there's a guy in Willow Springs. Uh, apparently, he, he told insurance company he had a farm accident. He lost both his feet. Ooh. Yeah, you... Did we do? Did we do this one? Yes. Oh, we did. And he didn't get the payment. And he didn't get the oh, payment. Didn't get, he, yeah. He the cops found out he had somebody come over and chop off his. Yeah, feet. we did this one. Yeah. Oh, and and did he well, that, was that on the, the rain camera? The John the the Bob. Yeah. How'd they oh, find just, that out? Yeah, the rain cam. Apparently, they just, sawing his I don't know. cuts. <laughs> the cuts <laughs> like a boy. This looks like an axe cut. Oh, wow. It, and well, how much did he? How much did he like hope a, to collect? This is a bread knife here. I know. Woo. Apparently, apparently they found out somehow. Maybe the guy who chopped off his feet said, "Hey, no, he didn't." <laughs> Maybe he's just not a smart guy. The theme okay. today is amputee. In Canada, a foreign landlord owns owns an apartment building. He's not paying his taxes. They're going to the people who are renting the apartment to get the taxes for the building. Is this? Canada, Canada, you suck. This is asinine. That's but this a- is this reminds me of restaurants in Los Angeles. Okay, yes. that that ask on your on your bill, they'll yeah. give you the they will add money and it'll say for the employee's health and health benefits. Yeah, you're paying for their as health if, care. as if I need to pay for their health benefits. <laughs> Isn't that your Listen, job, dummy? That put it in the insane. cost of food. Like this is why you can't know live I'm in California. That. Yeah. BC, British Columbia, is as requiring hospitals that have designated spaces for patients to illicitly use drugs. That you can go in there and shoot up and hang out at the hospital. Well, you know, Vancouver became famous for this when the Olympics rolled around and they wanted all of their homeless people uh, in one area. So they basically created Hamsterdam by giving out free needles and telling you that you could around uh, Main Street. True story. And this yeah. is true. You were there. You, yep, I lived there. And so right in Gastown, there's a there's a two block by two block radius where you can shoot up. Like I went to the gym there and I had to pay my meter and I had to ask a woman who was shooting up in her thigh if I could just squeeze by so I could pay my meter to go to CrossFit. <laughs> True story. Wow. True story. Did you so, say you took your kids there so you could scare them? Scare that's right. Them straight? Yeah. No, I took. Yeah. If you ever want to take your kids somewhere and just say, so this learn. is what drugs will do to you, fly to BC, yeah, fly to Vancouver, to go and just far. go straight. You don't have to go that far yeah. now. You can, now go you can go to LA. You can go to LA, LA. now. Yeah. yeah. You can go yeah, straight yeah. to Skid Row. Philadelphia. You can go yeah. to Oakland. Yeah. You can go to Philadelphia go with the. Phil- but you know what? You can also just br- make it a trip. You know, you do that and then you go to BC and kind of go to Vancouver, do some hikes. Yeah. Maybe hit Whistler. Yeah. A woman who registered as totally paralyzed walked into her <laughs> appointment and they still gave her the money. Wow. She, well, what kind of what paralysis? She, she, no, she said she was totally par- paralyzed. She's been collecting 450 pounds a month. And you would think they'd say, wait a minute, you're not totally paralyzed. We don't have to pay. They're still paying her. This world is so unbelievably awesome mm-hmm. where you just get paid for nothing for doing nothing are you going to brazil anytime soon i'm not next year u.s travelers are going to need to share their bank statements mm. before they can go to brazil why is that why i don't i have can no you I, read further I i'm curious as to why we need to sh- i'm uh, not going in the brazilian constitution it says no more pores no, oh yeah. Yeah. okay yeah. We don't very well pores here yeah no yeah. more yeah. pores. No yeah. okay. okay. foreign pores I mean, if we I feel that the, way about other teams' quarterbacks. I don't want your poor ass quarterback coming in my stadium. We've heard, yes. If yeah. we did that, do you think all these people that are walking across our border would be able to get in? I can think, you have no. your bank statement, sir? Do you? No, we can't. Let me see your, I don't have a license. Yeah. I need your bank statement. I need I'm your sale need, account, please. Yeah. If you could open that up for me. Uh, two things. Do you have an app? Have <laughs> you ever Have you ever thought about uh, <laughs> about flying on a plane that's powered by feces, human feces? Uh, Not until now. No. Ironically, the name of the airline is Wiz. 
Whiz Air. We're, Whiz Air is going to be powered by human feces. Now, huh. is that only based on it, you, how many people go to the bathroom on the flight? Is it real time? Well, I don't know. <laughs> like, you, so are they feeding people a modium? Like, yeah, sure like is that you real time? Yeah, exactly. Get there. That's yeah. the hardest vacuum. You ever sat on the toilet yeah. where you flush and the vacuum goes? Have I ever? Oh. I sit yeah. on it and flush for like seven times. It feels great. Yeah, that's fun. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. I'm almost done. <laughs> No, that's that's I'm almost. Weird. Why isn't it called dump air? Why is it called well, whiz? Because too on the nose. I don't know. Who's looking to fly on dump air? Nobody. A whiz? Yeah, it's better. Whiz. I if whiz you actually peel word. the if you peel the layers of paint back, you'll see it's a Spirit Airlines flight yeah, right here. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, I recognize this. <laughs> I know this is Spirit. Are we sure? Are we sure that we're going to be able to get there on our dump? No, okay. I'm not flying. I'm not, not, not going to I don't think there. it's like you pedal like and create electricity type deal like and you're I think you they're going to have a a reservoir of dump and you they just that's how it works, right? No, I mean, it's poo, it's human feces. Yeah, I know, but it's not you don't have to do it on the plane, right? They're just going to have oh, a reservoir. Oh, well, what if you do? I don't think what what if if everybody's you crash? Got a lot. Otherwise, a bunch we're, of poop we're not gets all to, over you, and then all, you catch on fire. I'm we're going, only going to get to Toledo. I think you guys are thinking like it's a train. And they're shoveling coal into the yeah, yeah. exactly. That's yeah. what I don't we're think thinking. That's right. It's believe, real time. Yes. You, we would agree that, that that catching fire is probably the worst way you could die. Burning alive, yes. catching on fire. The only thing worse with drowning is probably terrible. Or, but what if you? died in a plane crash where the reservoir of poo crashed into you right. and then you caught fire and your last moments are burning to death not ideal. covered with somebody's Look, dump. I not ideal. I haven't looked into it, but I imagine they're just going to turn this poo, poo in the fuel. I don't I, think yeah. it's going to well, be... There's I probably think so. some other That's the way you do it. Do it. Yes. That's not how we do it. Okay. Okay. We're we gonna just do it like have a, a big barrel of poo <laughs> like and a guy down there with a That's shovel. Right. And a guy with a shovel going... Get in there! And, yeah. the, and the stewardess is just force-feeding you lettuce and vegetables. Oh, yeah, here you go. <laughs> Fruit. And steak. Fiber. Fruit only. <laughs> coffee. Here. Just coffee and cigarettes for everybody. cheese bananas? No, no cheese, no, <laughs> no bananas. bananas. No. Cigarettes. That binds you. Would you like some prunes? <laughs> We're done. Eric, thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for Good having me. Good to have you in studio. We appreciate it. As always, talking right now about John Clay Wolf and GiveMeTheVin.com. That's my man, John Clay Wolf. John Clay Wolf gives you more. You know why I really like John Clay Wolf? Because he paid me more money than anyone else would for Frankie's car. My daughter had, I don't know how many. She was like a bumper car for her. And yet, and yet, John Clay Wolf gave me a ridiculous amount of money for it. And I was like, wow, this is the best thing ever. John Clay Wolf, I want to speak for you. I want to tell everybody about how great you are. And so I do. And he will do that for you. It's ridiculous. He gives more money for your vehicle than the other guys. You know why? Because he sells them at auction for, he just doesn't make as much. He buys them, sells them at auction. In some cases, I think he keeps some of them or whatever. I don't know. All I know is that he is really, really good at buying cars. Go to GiveMeTheVin.com. You have to go there. If you're going to sell your car, I, it doesn't matter. You don't want, might not take his offer. But but go there knowing what, it, what it's worth at GiveMeTheVin.com.
Welcome into the show. A Tuesday edition. The morning after the Astros lost to the Braves. And it was very similar to what we see from the Astros quite a bit when they lose ball games. The hitting falls apart or disappears completely. And some aspect of the pitching staff blows up. Unfortunately, once again, it was your highest price acquisition this offseason. Josh Hader was awful. Um, the Braves smacked him around when just Joe Spada just brought him in to keep it close, keep them in it. You know, the bullpen and Aragetti did their jobs. It was still 2-1 despite the Astros struggling to string anything together offensively. And, and you bring in Hader to keep you in the game to give you one final chance and he did anything but that he was terrible his era is now over nine and the astros go down to the braves and it was a combination of things beyond beyond hater you had argetti who as we talked about yesterday probably wasn't gonna gonna go very deep in the game but sean and i had low expectations we just wanted him to leave the game with the Astros still in it. And that's what he did. Four run, four innings, four hits, a couple earned runs, and um, five Ks, a couple walks. So if we were taking taking stock of his performance compared to certainly what happened in his first outing, his first start, you're going to go, thank you, Spencer, for keeping the club in the, in the ballgame. If you would have told me he would only give up two runs to four, I would have said the Astros had a pretty good ch- chance to win. The Braves countered with Darius Vines, who didn't go very deep in the game, but he stymied the Astros enough to get it to the Braves bullpen, who pretty much performed similarly to the Astros until Josh Hader showed up. Four runs, four hits, and a walk. And as I said, the ERA over nine, he got one out. He couldn't even finish uh, the inning. And the Astros go down six to one. So uh, a couple of things to remember from the ball game beyond, a, beyond Jose Abreu being terrible at the plate. Now, I know Jeremy Payne is going to get the the throwing error. But even at the time, I thought, okay, you're trying to save a run. Come off the bag. I, I get it. If you stay on the bag and make the pick, then you're out of the inning. But it was pretty clear, at least from the angles we saw in, in the replay, that he wasn't go- that wasn't going to happen. You need to keep hold that runner at third and let Spencer Argetti get another chance to get out of the inning. He didn't. Excuse me, that that t- and that tied and that tied the game. Pena's throwing error tied the game, and then then Albies was hit by a pitch, and that gave the Braves their two one their two one lead. But that wasn't the that wasn't the cause of the loss. It would have helped to to do anything possible to keep that keep that run from scoring, but but the but the, the lineup disappeared, and it as I said is it isn't as if Darius Vines and his changeup is something that people fear. And and the Astros had had no had nothing for him, and it's just disappointing. You come off the Rangers series, you feel pretty good about yourself. You get a good enough performance from our Getty. We'll, we'll hear from we'll hear from Joe Spada. He talked about what er- Arigetti did, and you think, okay, you get that type of that type of outing, and you have a real shot, and you did, and you just got nothing. Uh, Al- Altuve, great, now hitting over four hundred. Jordan was disappointing last night, as was the rest of the lineup. Alex Bregman got two hits, so his his batting average is now over 250. So maybe Alex Bregman is coming out of his early season slump, as you might expect. He's just bad in early in the season, and, and the rest of the lineup had one hit between them. So Bregman and Altuve had five of the six hit. Excuse me, two hits between them, five of the seven hits. Then you had Pena and Dubon, and once again the Astros one for seven in scoring position with runners in scoring position, and that and that doomed them until uh, the hater outing. Does it make you feel good, Sean? That the Astros bullpen has the second worst when it comes to costing their team's wins. They are second worst. Now, the Marlins are clearly the, the worst. They have a – it's over one run. They've doubled the Astros as far as contributing to losses when, with the bullpen is concerned. I'm surprised it's just the bullpen with the Marlins. Yeah, the Marlins overall have been terrible. Marlins, I would have thought that the starters blew them some games. The but they have. Get, okay. but, but as far as bullpen ranks – the Astros are a clear second, but the Marlins have a have doubled that. So the we know the Astros bullpen has been terrible. And the Marlins have like three wins. Yes, like so it's not great to be in second place as far no. as the as far as in that category of bullpen costing you. No. Uh, why, the, why would that Why would that make me feel better? 
I, I, I don't know if I asked you if it did I ask you if it made you feel better? I did, or you asked me if, if it makes me feel good. Yeah, did it, does it make you feel good? No, no, it doesn't. It's does a short it? answer? No, no. Uh, especially when you know last night it was it was there's there's a point where the Taylor Scotts and even Seth Martinez, the Brandon Belax, Rafael Monteros. It's like okay, I get it if they blow the game. But when it's one of the last three guys, when it's Abreu, Presley, and in last night's case, Hater, that's where you're just like, okay, you just cannot be having this. And I get it. They're still down when Hater came in, but it turned from a one-run game where, hey, it's not inconceivable that there's a rally in the ninth to, uh, to either send it to extras or to win. But then to just take take the game in your own hands in in the bad way and give up four runs again while you're getting paid the most by any reliever in MLB history, that sucks. It definitely sucks. I again, I would I would, I want to be fine, but I would understand if this was some of the uh, middle relief issues. But the fact that it's it's hater. It, it, Hater Presley and Abreu, like I'm sorry, they maybe not don't they don't have to be perfect every time that they're out there, but they can't. You can't be that. You can't be awful. Yes, you can't take the game from you know. I I don't actually have the win expectancy thing in front of me, but you can't take it from like a forty percent to a zero percent when let, you go out there. I'll I'll try to pull that up and see where it was when he entered the game. And then when when he exited, but yeah, you have a real shot now. The Astros lineup was not good last night, but it's the bottom of the ninth. You know, may, maybe maybe the Braves closer has a rough outing, and you find a way to pull out a victory when you've been relatively silent since the first inning. But to do that, to remove all chances and just suck the energy out of the ballpark, this you know the wave had people going. We'll hear from Todd Callis. Yeah, you know the you know the you know the. The season is wearing on Todd Callis when he has about a 15-second rant about how, how the wave sucks and why fans shouldn't do it. Uh, that's where he's at as far as this season's gone on. Uh, but I, I like he, I like bitter Todd Callis as a, <laughs> as a character. He's, he's seen nothing but success here yeah. calling games, and now he's got to deal with this, this team, and Josh Hader and the wave, all those things combined to uh, lead to – it wasn't it wasn't egregious, but he took issue with the fans and and Blum, and Blummer chimed in as well. So we'll hear we'll hear from those guys. It was an entertaining moment, and what I didn't suspect would turn into a misery in the next twenty minutes when Hater couldn't get an out, one out, four runs given up, and we took any chance to win that ball game away. And it came from your highest paid reliever, and and maybe he's one of those guys who, if you're not giving him closing opportunity, he's just going to be this type. Joe Musgrove, before Mastro, uh, was with Hater at a previous stop and talked about how nice it is to have a, a have a guy who can get you more than outs in the ninth inning. He didn't mention Hater by name, but he was talk, talking about complimenting his current, their current ninth inning guy, their current closer, and say, hey, it's pretty nice to not have to worry about working around how this guy wants to, uh, to and how he wants to come in the games and get out. So it was a Less than thinly veiled shot at Hader, and maybe that's what he is. He's our next Ken Giles. Ken Giles was really good um, at times when he was closing ball games. Anytime else, he wound up being terrible, the butt of jokes, and eventually punching himself in the face. So just we don't do that. Josh we just, just don't hit yourself in the face, please. Um, Be bad. Like don't keep if, blowing games too, but, but don't revert. Don't result. Don't have it result in you hitting yourself in the face, or there was, or punching a wall, because that is something that relievers do too. They'll punch a wall and they're out for two months. Yeah, shout out to Phil Maton. Yeah, it's 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 so weird. It's your livelihood. Like even I know I I guess you're failing and it's and it hurts and you and you you're frustrated. Open hand, open hand the wall. Yeah. Just with, the, with your open hand, you you you're survive, you'll survive that and still get out whatever you want to get out as far as anger is concerned. I'd be I'd be careful if I was a pitcher with like steak knives and you know I, I'd be I'd be careful with anything happening to closing car doors, anything that has to do with my hands. I can't imagine being like you know what. And, and then coming and explaining that to your manager, the yeah. rest of your team. I'm going to be out for two months. I oh, broke my hand happened? punching a wall. Uh, Idiot. One of the more embarrassing ways to miss time. At least Jeff. At least Jeff Kent was like, I fell washing my car, washing my truck, 
and that's why that's why I'm going to miss time. Also I would not, I would, not believable. No, it wasn't, and no one believed that time. I would definitely make up an excuse. I'm not telling people I'm I'm stupid and I punched the wall and now I can't play for a couple months. What what? How much are you making? And you couldn't refrain from punching a wall because you're because you act like a child. <laughs> All right, we appreciate your efforts. Uh, we don't appreciate what Josh Hader did last night. It'll get better. He can't be over nine forever. The ERA can't be over nine. Um, and so it's not been great for high price signings for the Astros. I mentioned Abreu not coming off the bag. He had another bad performance. Astros Twitter was not thrilled with him striking out on 88 mile per hour pitches down the middle. He he. They had pitch tracks out. They were they, they didn't love that. No, they were not fans. Like a lot of a lot of uh, sarcastic stuff. Like, well, how can you blame him for missing on these on these pitches? And he just showed a couple what you consider meatballs down the middle that he that he was swinging through. It's been a rough run. Oh, but just remember, his timing is off. That's all. The timing is off. He'll get it together. I mean, because it was so slow and slow down the middle of the plate. He couldn't believe it. He was surprised. Yeah, through time, it's through his timing off. Yeah, whatever it might be, it was an all-around disappointing night because they were in it throughout. You got a good enough performance from your from your starter, and it wasn't enough. And your bullpen held it down until you got to your highest paid reliever, and then it fell apart. So I, you go down six to one. If if the if Josh Hader just got out of that inning cleanly and they just still just lost two to one, we'd be so positive right now. I mean, sure, we we got what we wanted. Yeah, we got, uh, Spencer uh, Getty. He did what we asked him to do. Colors. <laughs> yeah, he. As far as this three game set with Arigetti and Brown and 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 France, we got what we wanted out of the first guy. That's kind of the average. In fact, he might have exceeded expectations. He only gave up two earned runs. Yeah, I mean, he and he, he shouldn't have given up. <laughs> went four innings <laughs> yeah and if not for Jeremy Pena's throwing error um maybe he doesn't give maybe he doesn't give up the two earned runs um or you know a break could could have come off the back so he did what we asked of him it's just the lineup didn't do do that and then Hader did what he did so a great a nice performance by Hader would have changed my my thoughts sure you lose but at least Hader com- comes out and shuts shuts them down and that would have been a a nice bounce back from what has been a tough year for him so far but it didn't happen. They go down. They have they have another game today, and you hope you hope Hunter Brown follows the Arigetti performance and just keeps it competitive, and you, and you hope the lineup does what it had done against the Rangers, was really break Rangers pitching around, and um, and we hope that continues tonight because losing to the Braves again and losing the series at home after the good feelings coming off the Rangers series uh, will certainly be a a change in momentum. We have other things to get to. The, the Texans have reported. A lot of guys are talking about the, the excitements around the year. Will Anderson had thoughts on the culture for the Texans and why players want to join them, and maybe not everyone is Texans worthy. I remember that phrase from long ago. Now it's back, if you believe what Will Anderson is saying. We'll hear from D'Amico. Will Anderson, C.J. Stroud spoke um, at the Texan, with the Texans as they reported. He also was a guy who threw out a first pitch right down the middle. So people are, are happy because their starting quarterback can hit John Singleton in his catcher's mitt. John Singleton, who did not play, but didn't make an appearance on Jackie Robinson Day. So we'll get to that. There are other things to get to, including a, an, up, an update on Giannis. Giannis, it's going to be tough for the Bucks at least early because it appears Giannis won't be available for at least the first part of that series. A lot of, a lot of stuff to get to. We're one segment in. We'll be back.
This is the Dale Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dale Olalea. By the way, going back to my wave comment, if it's a 12-3 game in the 8th, you guys do it all the ways you want to have, have a blast. But it's this kind of a game. You're stirring it up, TK. I don't want the wave. I don't. No, lock this in. has been a great game. Okay, from a player's perspective, to your point, what you just said, I'll explain it, is if the fans were doing the wave in that situation and told me they were not focused on the game, that's the only thing I'm going to say. That's what I'm saying. That's what we said. <laughs> that's Todd Callis and Jeff Blum from last night's game. That was in the eighth inning before it got away from the Astros, before Josh Hader made his appearance. The wave upset Granado this morning, upset Todd Callis. I don't know if Todd Callis has ever gotten after the fans about the wave. I don't. I'm not listening to every Astros game or, or watching it, so I don't know what he says all the time. But I kind of feel like the season's getting to Todd Callis. It's early. It's early, sure. And we know the Astros have every opportunity to turn around. But Todd is Todd, – Todd Callis isn't used to this. He's been – He's been around quite a while now, but for for his tenure, the Astros have been a good baseball team. Uh, they've never been this bad uh, for this long of a stretch, at least early in the year. And he's and now he's like, you know what, fans, cut it out. This is a good baseball game. Pay attention. Stop doing the wave. Or maybe he's just worn down by the wave. Maybe he's seen it too many times in situations where he thinks it's inappropriate. And it's like, you know what, knock it off. Pay attention to the game. This team needs your help. Build some momentum. I I appreciate it. I don't have one one opinion I don't really feel one way or the other about the wave do it or don't do it I'm just not going to do it I think it's embarrassing um to be a, an adult doing it but if you want to do it fine uh, Todd Callis has had enough though yeah that <laughs> I I love the rules for the way I would love to like know exactly the situation that's like uh can't do it sorry yeah who run game if you're in a game of the seventh, if it's a game where your win probability is under 25 percent, can you do the wave one or one team's win probability is under 20? Yes. If you're the home team and you're down and your win probability is under 25 percent, are you allowed to do the wave late like six inning on? If this is the only thing that's going to keep you entertained because your team's not playing well, like if you're the although the Oakland A's are actually playing pretty well. Uh, but if you're the Florida Marlins or Miami Marlins and you actually decided to go to one of their games at home, can you do the wave as soon as the game starts? Well, you need, do you have enough people to do the wave? You need people throughout the stadium to do that's it. True. To do the wave. That it, that's true. You do need that. that I need, that's pathetic. <laughs> that would be sad, is trying to do the wave at Marlins Park at, like, one of these day games <laughs> while school's still in, while and it's, like, 1,300 people are there. But they're lying and saying that five thousand people are there. Well, tickets sold, Sean. Not people okay, through the thanks. through through. Not people who actually showed up to the game. Tickets sold. I have thanks, my own. Thanks, Jeffrey Loria. <laughs> well, that's how they, all the owners do it. I have arbitrary rules. If you are a father with your family and you want to keep the kids entertained, I'm okay if you're doing the wave, even if it's in the eighth. But you know, your kids are your kids are. Are, it's wear, this game is wearing thin on your kids. They want to do anything else but be there. You want you're to do the way all the tricks. You're trying to do anything to keep them engaged. As you're hoping your Astros come back. If you're if you're on a date, no, you don't do the wave. You can't. I don't care. Well, you can't start the wave. You you can't do it. You can't participate. I, you're no. It it depends on the level of the level of of this relationship. If you are if you've been with this woman for six months and she's seen the worst of you already. <laughs> You can do the wave. How's the wave, though? It's embarrassing. Because, in with the worst because it's embarrassing. If you are on a first date, I don't care what's going on. You can't do the wave. Because <laughs> even if she's encouraging you to do the wave, she's going to look at you a certain way if you get up and do it. It's, <laughs> it, it, it looks bad. You can't do it. Those are my arbitrary. This is me. It's arbitrary. I understand. There's no real science behind it. It's just my thoughts. That's, in that's interesting. It doesn't matter. She goes, ha-ha, do the wave. Nah. You, you'll think me immediately less cool if I do the wave. You think you want to see me do the wave, but once I get up and do it, it's always going to be an image in your head. Oh, this this you clown. Lift, lift up your shirt, Woo! your belly showing. Yeah. Yeah. Or even even if you, like, make a sound effect when you do it, you can't. You got to avoid. It's like it's like being on a first date and having and having something in your teeth or something in your nose. These are all things that will be lasting images and if you get up and make that sound effect while doing a wave, 
I'm not saying it's over for you, but it's something you have to fight to overcome. And you don't want to add obstacles initially. At some point, you charmed her so much, she thinks everything you think is cool or cute. She might be okay with it, but not on the first date. Sorry. Arbitrary, I understand. I, but those are my rules. arbitrary, and also I've never... Thank you, Todd Callis, for the stimulating conversation. Because <laughs> I, I honestly had never really even thought about i don't i don't really think about the way i see i see them do the wave and i'm like oh they're doing the wave yeah so that's it that that is the end of my wave thoughts is oh they're doing the wave. i get it it doesn't really do anything for me as far as the games oh, okay the fans don't know you hear the sound in the background before you actually see it okay the fans yeah, are doing away that's why it's it, wave. it wouldn't upset me um so much but i would not take part not on a, I, that's not surprising that you would not take no, part. It's it, I would go look everyone look everyone's having a good time. Host at the station least likely to participate in the wave. Dell number one pick. You think so? Yeah. I feel like I throw Paul up there too. The, the I could see the, Paul with the enough, north with enough margaritas in him that he's drunk enough. Yes, the northeastern sports fan. I don't feel like he's doing the wave. Probably probably not. But I don't see Joe doing it. The mid he's a Midwesterner by heart. I don't think he's doing the wave. I th- I think it's uh who's the most likely then? Jeremy Branham? No. You don't think so? Baseball purist. Jeremy That's Branham. true. He does love he does love he, some he numbers. Probably, he was probably nodding along with, with Todd, That's right, Todd. Yeah, you're probably right. I don't, Todd. I don't think we have a I don't think we have Joel, a Joel, no. No. I don't think we actually have a group that would do it. Would Brian would B Mac do it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I might be the most likely, just because I had zero thoughts about the yeah. way. Oh, look. I would, I just hey, look, it. everyone's having fun. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> Irv, I see you. Uh, you want to talk not shortest wait times, and I've never said that we have that. I see you. You want to talk television. Hold on. Um, I just had to get my uh, arbitrary and really non-binding rules about first dates and the wave. Just don't do it, unless that really woman really likes you. And then she'll like anything you do. Irv, we'll get you on the other side. We'll be back.
You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Granado got fired. Don, Dom, or Don Granado, the manager, the manager, the former coach for the Sabres, which is actually John Granado's cousin, Don Granado, fired. Um, the curse of John. He went to a game last week, and now his cousin's without a job. So, blame John. I certainly do. I certainly worked with him and got fired before. I was going to say, think about how many people he's worked at at uh, ESP 97.5 that's gotten. I'm a prime example. Yeah. So, a Don Granado fired. It's not a great But day. Don Granado might get rehired. It's happened to me a couple times. <laughs> so, it's always a possibility. Don't don't fret, Don Granado. Uh the, the former Sabres coach, no longer their coach. And as I said, related to our guy, John Granado. Irv, which he goes by a different name depending on what show he's calling, but he wants to talk about some television. What's up, Irv? Hey, it's Porsche, gentlemen. How you doing? What's up? Wrong show, but go ahead. <laughs> what up, Bill? What up, Sean? Hey, um, have y'all uh, have y'all seen that new show uh, Fallout on Amazon Prime by any chance? I watched the entire thing over over the weekend. Well, it started on Thursday, but yeah, I've seen it. So, so before that, uh, what do you what do you have you ever played the game besides that? And I got another 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 thing. You know how OJ just passed away? Do you think in the afterlife he met up with Nicole and said the juice is loose? Mm, I imagine Nicole, if what we believe to be true, least some people believe to be true, is true. I don't think they had a meeting. I feel like I feel like that even in the afterlife, there's a restraining order against OJ. If I'm Nicole um, and Ron Goldman, if we believe what is out there, um, I had not played the game. Um, I knew it was a very popular game. But I went in kind of blind. I didn't even look up the game beforehand. I just wanted to watch the show because uh, I'm a fan of, of a couple of pe- people. And if you don't know, Fallout's on Amazon Prime. You can watch it right now. Has Walton Goggins, who is of justified fame and other things. Guy eats up a scene when he's in it. We talked to Michael Carroll about it in his weekly segment um, on Friday. Ella Purnell, if you watch Yellow Jackets, she is one of the stars of the first season. Not a big not a big part in the second season and if you watch the season finale of of season one you'll you'll figure out why i'm in because i like the actors and it was entertaining um i didn't know any of the lore um i didn't like i said i didn't know much about it but if you're looking for a humorist and true to the game adaptation fallout is that it's gotten good reviews if you believe in the rotten tomato stuff um the, the critics there like it and kyle mclaughlin's in it it's a name you might not know, but a face you'd recognize. So you're going to see a lot of people you recognize. And sometimes that's good if you don't know anything about the source material. I would recommend it. If you like post-apocalyptic stuff and gory violence, that's part of the thing, too. And mutant monsters. It's a lot of that. Just think of all the video game adaptations that are rated mature. It's kind of kind of going to have that in it. Is the whole series out uh, right yes, now? Yes. Uh, they bulk dropped it. It's not a week-to-week thing. And there's no subtitle, Sean. That helps. That helps Both, you. both those help. <laughs> yes. You can binge watch it uh, at your leisure. You don't have to wait. And then you don't have to read very much unless unless you are a person who are now just not you specifically, but some people are just subtitle people because they don't – sometimes they miss it. They miss, some, uh, they miss some audio for whatever reason, bad hearing, whatever. So they have the subtitles on. I mostly put them on for British television because sometimes they say things I don't know what they're saying. Um, depending on the accent, so I'll have it on there. But I'm in on Fallout. Um, it's it's not something that's going to catch everyone because of the subject matter and just some of the the, the violence in it. You got a you got Walton Goggins playing a ghoul without a nose. Uh, he's a ghoul because he was affected by radiation, and now he's barely a human being anymore. And there's a there's a line about ass jerky. So that's kind of where the show is. It, if 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 you're good with that and a dog. Tears apart a giant cockroach. So these are things. These are things to get ready for if you want to watch Fallout. There's no transition, so I'm just going to talk about the Texans now. I don't know what smooth, how smoothly I, I could have gotten to that. Something Speak, about Fallout. Speaking of things you want to watch in bulk, I don't know. Uh, no, there's the nothing fallout there. Fallout from what free agency? I don't know. Nah, see what I'm saying. There's nothing there. Uh, the Texans met the media yesterday. Uh, we're, we're, we're at that time of the year where they're back in the facilities. 
particularly for this team, there's a lot of excitement. D'Amico Ryan spoke. We had C.J. Stroud speak on how he found out about the Stefan Diggs trade. But first, we'll, we'll, he, we'll hear from our head coach, D'Amico Ryan, was asked about Stefan Diggs and adding him. Certainly a piece to the puzzle that could elevate the Texans. There are questions about what Stefan Diggs is when he's not playing football, or at least when he's not getting the level of targets he wants. But D'Amico doesn't have any concerns right now. Yeah, with Diggs, adding him is one of those guys I talked about. He's been a great player in this league for a long time, well-respected. He's been a great teammate. He's been a leader, a captain. And, you know, when you look at him and you watch the tape and you put it on, you know, no one doubts the playmaker that he is, right? He changes games for team for the teams that he's been, he's been a part of, and we're anticipating the same thing for us. Stefan Dix. Well, you can't, for the most part, knock the production. Over the back half of his last year at Buffalo, you can start to look at maybe a potential drop-off or maybe it'll just simply a change in how they want to run offense. We know Joe Brady took over for Ken Dorsey, and the philosophy changed. Is Stephon Diggs going to be a great teammate? Eh. That's probably going to be determined about determined by his level of importance in the offense, which is somewhat concerning when you think – him being a great teammate, it's all about if he's getting a lot of the attention. What Kirk Cousins and Josh Allen in a private moment say Stefan Diggs was, was a great teammate? It seems unlikely, but we don't know. I don't know the relationship he had specifically with those two. We just see the rumors and some of the, the stuff on the sideline, which just could be a moment in time and not not the overarching theme of his relationship with those guys. But CJ Stroud is now his quarterback. CJ Stroud was asked a couple things. Most and mostly he talked about well, people asked him about the uniforms, they asked him about Diggs. We'll get to the Diggs thing. Um it was funny when he when he discussed Diggs and his acquisition because he wasn't aware of it until someone told him. He wasn't kept in a loop. It wasn't like the Texans asked CJ Stroud about whether he'd love to have Stefan Diggs available and what what he thought about it. He he found out like a lot of us found out by a news report and, and we'll get to that. But the other big story if we want to call it a story are the Texans uniforms it is what's filling time between now and the draft and eventually we'll we'll actually have players the Texans have have drafted and then that'll be the talk but CJ Stroud your quarterback if you if you missed it he was involved in the process along with a lot of fans that video came out yesterday but here's his thoughts on the Texans new uniforms Uh, I think they're cool you know I think um, they're definitely uh, I don't want to say too much but I think people like them and I'm uh, really excited. I think that even brings a new, uh, like, energy to, you know, NRG, which is kind of uh, ironic. But, uh, you know, I think Thanks I'm super excited left. just to be wearing new stuff. I liked the unis last year, too, you know, but I think it's time for change. And, you know, it's a new era now, and uh, we'll be able to build with these, with these unis and look good while doing it. Sean, do you think his his NRG alluded, illusion joke was funny? Because you, you nodded your head, but in the background, you heard media people laughing. Would you have laughed? No. No. I would have nodded my head. Just like you. And they're like, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I see what you did. I, I see what you did I there. I don't think it warranted laughter. Sometimes you get the joke, and you just don't laugh. Yeah, it's <laughs> that's, that's just what it is. I like, understand what you're doing, but I'm, it's not. it doesn't rise to the level of me laughing. If someone really wants to blow their mind, like, CJ, what do you think? What, do you think, what kind of company do you think NRG is? It's an energy company. Hmm. Oh, oh, okay. wow. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> kind of ironic, huh? Isn't it? Yeah, that's why yeah. they named it that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it, exactly. It used to be called Reliant. <laughs> yes, and then they thought you thought what would be clever. You know, the Texans aren't reliant on uh, how good they look to play games. Kind of ironic. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not laughing, but I'm nodding my head. I, I see what you did there. <laughs> did, did, that, I mean, J.J. Watt had to have said something like that at some point. I was going to I was gonna ask if any Texan has ever said that. Then I just shortened the list to J.J. Watt's had to say You know, unless someone wrote it for him, I don't think he makes a joke. I saw his SNL appearance. That look, I don't know. You, you, have, your, you have your thoughts on J.J. as an actor, but he's a great cue card reader. I could tell because he was supremely focused on making sure he got those lines out. He is, he is not Ryan Gosling. Um, I mean that's unfair. One's a trained actor. One's yeah, a one's football a player. Football player. The other guy. Fine. He's not Peyton Manning. <laughs> okay. 
fair? Yeah, no, yes. completely fair. Or Eli. Eli's better at it all than right, JJ. Right. Eli is better at it than JJ. JJ wasn't great. He wasn't. <laughs> no, no. I just, it's one thing when it's Peyton, you know. It's the other thing when it's Eli. Eli's a two-time Super Bowl winner. And, and a better comedic act, actor than J.J. Watt. And it's fine to be that. It's okay. Not everyone can be the Mannings. It's all right. They, they, have, they, they, they are pretty good at, a, at several things. Pitchmen, quarterbacks. I mean, we'll see what Arch is. Ho- oh. Hopefully he doesn't bring the, bring the, bring the, the average, average down. down. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, wait, he has to win two Super Bowls. <laughs> well... <laughs> That's the standard. His, his uncles did. Yeah, that's he doesn't have to be. Well, his grandpa, his grandpa's dragging that average down. It's true, but let's not hurt Bum. it anymore. What? Let's not hurt it anymore. Look, you don't have to be. You don't have to achieve at the highest level at the col- on the college ranks. Eli and, and Peyton were good, but never won a national title. I'm not asking for that. I am, but well, of going. course you are. <laughs> Understandably, he. If you don't know, Sean's a big Texas guy, but on the pro level, if he gets there, he's got to win two Super Bowls, or he's a giant disappointment. It's just how it goes. Sorry. I, I, I'm glad that you're going to be the Skip Bayless for Archer Manning. I, what Skip Bayless is to LeBron, that's you to Archer Manning. I've watched, I've watched those high school highlights. Stop playing against little kids, all right? You you wouldn't go to camps because that's not what he's about. Or he didn't, want, about. He didn't want he he didn't didn't want want people to see him against actual D1 athletes. We can, we can, t- we can pick and choose how we, want to, how we want to take him not participating in camps. I, I saw those kids you played against. I mean, I, I wasn't impressed. Now, Arch is the clear backup at Texas. Uh, Malik Murphy's out. Is the backup. Oh, he's not even a clear backup? <laughs> you, you don't even think he's a clear backup? Oh, well, you know, we'll, we'll see if uh, Quinn yours makes it through Oh, the I thought season. you meant he was actually battling for the number oh, two spot. no, no. It's not clear that he's the backup. Steve Sarkeesian says he's the backup, the clear backup. But, but what say does he have? All of it, actually. <laughs> I know at points the Texas Boosters have had their hands in things, but coming off a playoff appearance, I think he has all to say. All right. And, all right. and Quinn Ewer certainly does as well. If he plays poorly, then Arch has a chance. I'll, I'll drop a suggestion next time I see him. Oh, okay. You have a Just personal relationship? Keep, keep an open mind. Hey, man, don't, don't be closed-minded. You never know. Hey, that Michigan game comes around. Make a change. I don't, know. don't be Tied set in stone. Time? I don't yeah. Tied at halftime, you want them bench? Yeah, if it's like if it's like ten to ten, and and there's a, there's been a lot of punts, and there's a pick six that gives Texas their only touchdown. Quinn's struggling. You, you're have a, an open mind is all I'm saying. You go, hey, your mentor bench Jalen Hurts in a title game. You can't bench Quinn in, in a September early season game, game against in, Michigan in week two. Yeah, you want to be like Saban, make the move. Uh, Texas fans doing everything possible. To I get, wish I had the infl- I wish I had. I wish I could be a booster. That's like part of the problem. <laughs> that would be great, huh? Ha- to have the money to be so bored with your life, you can dabble in Texas football death charts. And then, yeah, and like you know, all the peasant fans on message boards are like, "Man, all the this meddling, uh, <laughs> you know." Yeah. Just because he has his name on the like tunnel or something, <laughs> he thinks he can call the shots. Well, when you're securing four or five star offensive linemen, yeah, you want to be able to call some shots. Exactly. Understood. Exactly. Understood. Uh, I don't know how he got to. Where Sean's making moves to get Quinn Ewers out of the starting job, but here we are. Once again, no way to transition to this unless you're just a fan of great plumbing. And that's what Aqueduct Plumbing Company does for you. I've been talking a lot about the repiping, and repiping is certainly important because with bad pipes, you get bad water, and not just bad water, stinky, nasty water that can leak all over your floors and in your walls and destroy your home. But also, we're talking about service. Sometimes plumbing emergencies come up and that's what aqueduct plumbing is there for you don't have to wait a couple days while while your while your floor is falling apart aqueduct plumbing will come out there quickly and assess and get you right and if you want to call them it's 281-488-6238 281-488-6238 plumbing emergency call aqueduct plumbing they'll get you right they have local contractors experienced ones and if, if it is about repiping, they've done over a 1,000 of those. So if you want an expert, they have it. They have those guys there for you. You get a free best, and it's the best price quote in town. It's not just free. It's the best price quote in town. And they'll solve your leaking problems today. 
As I mentioned, those experienced experience plumbers, they're local. Billy Brown is local. He's from the Clear Lake area. So you want experience. You want local. Aqueduct Plumbing Company is the place for you. That's aqueductplumbingcompany.com. You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Yeah, it was a lot at the Pro Bowl, man. It was a lot of guys like, yeah, tell them I'm trying to come over there. Like, tell them, Nico, I'm I'm, I'm saying, but I'm like, Texas ain't for everybody, man. It's just a it's a, it's a, it's a different type of DNA you, talk, you have to have to play here, man. It's a different type of character you have to have. Um, and you just got to love football, man. And I, I think, you know, the front office and coach, they do a really good job of choosing the guys that they want to be in here um, that, you know, can help change the culture and help keep uplifting the culture. Hashtag Texans culture, hardest working, fittest, whatever the hell the, the heat right on their floor. Is that what the Texans are now? Uh, there are only certain guys who can play here. There was a discussion about that this morning. John and Lance had different sides of it. John is uh, more pragmatic. Lance is all in on this Texans team. Um, he doesn't care what is said. Everyone else is poverty when, when it's compared to his Texans, mostly because of his quarterback. But Will Anderson had a big part to play in that, too. Will Anderson's only known as far as his pro career, the Texans, and then he came from Alabama, two places where certainly it does take a type. Um, so you have to be really talented. You have to be willing to max out, at least at Alabama. The whole only only certain people can play for the Texans, I don't know that. 
Stefan Diggs can play for the Texans. Stefan Diggs came from the Bills, a very successful franchise. Now, they didn't win at the highest level. That's why they're in a bit of a transition as far as veterans leaving their organization. But I don't know what that means. Only a certain type. You mean hardworking, talented football players? Those guys can fit in in a lot of places. The Texans aren't unique in that regard. And we'll see what Texans culture means going forward. The schedule will certainly get tougher, and it'll probably test them differently than last year did when not not much was expected. They surprised people. They were one of the best stories in the league last year, and now people are on the bandwagon in different ways. Some people think this Texans team has a real shot to contend for a Super Bowl. I think you solidify your defensive tackle position and your second door, Darian, I'd be right there with you. I don't know if you can get all that done in the draft, but you want to put them in the top seven of the AFC, top six, I'm cool with that. That's a, I understand that. But Texans culture, I think that's built up over multiple years, and you have a great foundation going forward. Going forward, a lot of teams have hardworking, talented players. I, 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 do, I am interested to see if that becomes a thing for the Texans where – where we knew they were a franchise who stayed away from certain players because of the off the field stuff. Maybe they become a team where people go, okay, that guy couldn't play for the Texans. If that happens, then you know, D'Amico Ryan's is doing something really, 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 really big where the whole league knows there are certain types of players who can't, who couldn't play for the Texans. If we get to that point, more power to them and just more evidence that the Texans have hired the right guy. I hope hashtag Texans, Texans culture becomes a thing. And people get sick of it. Yeah. Texans culture. One year is all it takes yeah. for for someone to be like, it's not for everybody. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know what that means so early in the process. I guess I guess, you know what? I guess like the David Cully, Jack Easterby era, probably also not for everybody. Not for anyone in the city, really. No one wanted that era to continue. <laughs> so, you know, it's just kind of continuing that. No, it, it you know, you you love to hear it, but it's also like kind of a ridiculous thing to say. Yeah. yeah. You 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 made it to the divisional round. You've done that before. This franchise has done that before. It ain't unique. Uh, Ten uh, wins in a divisional round loss. Uh, winning the AFC South and losing in the divisional round. Who could have who could have seen that before? Who has seen that before for the Texans? It has been their it has been their high water mark for for years now. They matched it in year one, which is great. Um, nine and seven, ten and seven. It's it's happened before, uh, and it happened again. Now the hope is you take the next step. Uh, you you seem very far away from taking that step, at least if we think about the second half against the Ravens. But you know, you had talent on the at the defensive end position and wide receiver. I, those are big money, big 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 name, high profile guys who are on your team, Daniel Hunter and Stephon Diggs. I I am still concerned about the interior of the offensive line. You have to hope from help there. Hope for health there. Kenyon Green was mentioned by D'Amico Ryan. Said he will compete for a starting job. Ooh, that don't feel good. I. What else is he gonna say about a, a recent first round pick? I will certainly take that. And if you have that opinion, I will. I will take that and realize that sometimes you, you just got to be a coach. You just got to say stuff to make sh- to make sure you keep one of the guys in the fold. Don't immediately write them off this early into the offseason program. And you have to use the word compete. Yeah. You're not giving it to him, but he's going to get a chance. And if he plays well, all yeah, sure. If that happens. And they like Kenyon Green. I mean, D'Amico, at least D'Amico Ryans was very positive about him, said he had some things to take care of, and we know he didn't play at all last year. So if Kenyon Green comes back and he pulls a Derek Stingley, where some people were writing off Stingley because of play and a lack of health going into last year, great. If, he's, if Nick Casario can hit on the 2022 draft and 2023 draft in those ways. uh, We're talking about a guy who's kind of flipped the script on his GM tenure because all the questions were about Nick Casario coming off the 2022 draft when Stingley and Kenyon Green were not healthy, and if they did play, weren't good. And then you see 2023. When you know the names, Tank and and CJ and Will Anderson, all performers. So uh, we're, we're in the mode where you get Quint- Kenyon Green to show up and, and play and be healthy. Uh, we're talking about Nick Casario as one of the best execs as far as drafting in the league, which is a f- big departure from what we thought before. I can't imagine being able to say that. <laughs> and we're just a couple years removed from saying, why is he still here? Why, yeah. why didn't he, why did, how did he survive? It's just, it goes to 
goes to show that if you just absolutely nail it with, I mean, Will Anderson too, defensive player, the uh, defensive rookie of the year, but mostly just nail it with quarterback. Yeah, it changes the perspective. Like if Will Anderson was great, and th- then you missed out on quarterback. Or and they just had the first pick and picked well, Bryce yeah, Young. Yeah, they, t- they took Bryce Young. And Bryce Young, as people have said, probably would be better as a Texan than he was a, as a Panther. But if he's not C.J. Stroud and you have an average year, you don't make the playoffs, you win like six or seven games, the feeling would be different. So certainly hitting on a Will high Am- pro, the quarterback <laughs> changes perspectives. Will Anderson isn't going, uh, Texans football, not for everybody. Yeah, seven and nine. You're right. I don't want to be that. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's not for me. I don't want to be seven and yeah. seven and ten. Excuse me. At a certain at a certain point, and again, this is why it's it's crazy that it all happened in one year. Really, what he's saying is that they're not even recruiting. They're they're turning people down. They're closing the door. On, he's slamming the door shut on people's faces that want to play for the Texans. It is very Dabo Sweeney of him. He didn't play for him, but that would that's what Dabo would do. Hey, there are only certain ties we want at Clemson. Um. Yeah, sure, we could be out for all the five stars, but only a certain type of player fits at Clemson. We're a family. Here. Some, and sometimes one of those players is the son of my defensive coordinator. How many ver- how many Venables were running around that defensive that defensive depth chart? There's a couple of Sweeney. Well, at least, Sweeney. At, at least those guys weren't starters. Venables had his, oh, his they, son playing <laughs> safety in a title game, or at least a playoff game, as a starter. I think his son was a starting safety against the, that great LSU team. I was like, all right, Venables. Did they win? No, they did not uh, win. Well, no. at least, uh, at least not against LSU. LSU. Didn't throw over his head every time. Oh uh, well, he had a couple. Oh, oh, what? Uh, yeah, that's I, that's surprising, right? <laughs> Look, I, I'm sure the Venables kid was a great player on the high school level, coach on the field. Uh, yeah, all the things that you say, but you're telling me that at Clemson you couldn't find a kid that was better than the coach's kid, whose best other offer was from Coastal Carolina. And I looked up. I'm not just making that up. I did the research. Years ago, because I was like, how the hell is a Venables kid starting at safety for them? Look at his 247. I was like, yeah, exactly. And Coastal Carolina was his best offer at the time. Coastal Carolina was a good program. Still a pretty good program. But stop it, Nepo baby. Get out of here. Nepo safety. <laughs> Nepo safety, exactly. You're telling me? I know Clemson takes a certain type of kid, and, and we only recruit the best, and we want Clemson to be family. But... You can you could have found a better safety to to be the be the back end when when Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase are playing wide receiver when you're trying to win a national title and then you then you try to fool me by putting one of your kids at linebacker too and make me think that was the best option. Cut it out, Venables. Good luck, Oklahoma. I'm done ranting about college football. Hour one of the program in the books. We'll be back.
I never like to take back slander. But Tyler Venables, the safety for Clemson that I was ranting about earlier, did not play in the national title game. He played in their next playoff appearance when Justin Fields lit the Clemson lit the Clemson secondary up, but he did not play in the game against LSU. Jake was available, though. He was a linebacker who couldn't run with anyone as, as LSU was on their way to a national title. So the Venables sons played important parts in Clemson lore, Clemson history, just different games than I than I than I mentioned, but there but still, you could have found better players. And Brent Venables will travel with that Oklahoma program into the SEC along with Texas, and we'll see how both those programs do. A lot of expectations for Texas. The Oklahoma expectations, eh, eh, not the same. And uh, for some people, not a big of not that big of a surprise. Uh, I know the Venables thing was well, he's really loyal to Clemson, and some of that was true. Other people thought. He's not head coach material. He did get a big job in his first one, so he played it right. And we'll see now that he's in the SEC if he will be long for that Oklahoma job. It's going to be a tough run for them. Texas has done a better job getting ready for the transition uh, than Oklahoma has. And and you got a proud Texas Longhorn yeah. asserting that that's true. <laughs> Yeah, I'm surprised those Venable kids aren't on the staff. No, Um, we talked about it during the break. You can't hire him right off. You can't uh, hire Tyler right off the bat or Jake right off the bat. You you can coach at UAB, which is where he's at. Get a couple years under your belt. Say, look, he's qualified. I I can hire him as my linebacker coach in a couple years. We'll see. Um, I wouldn't put it past Brent Venables if, um, if if his time at Clemson is any indication. I mentioned very early in the show that Giannis Antetokounmpo will will be unavailable to start the series against the Pacers. He's out for an undetermined amount of time, and this led to a discussion during the break about Dame Lillard. Sean is of the opinion that Dame Lillard, if he's the guy he's supposed to be, he will at least keep the Bucks in it until Giannis comes back, if he does come back. There's some question about that. I look at that Bucks team and go, they're no better than any Portland team, at least the best Portland teams that Dame had. You're going to be depending on older Brooke Lopez, who at one point could have been a rocket in the offseason. Bobby Portis, Chris Middleton, who <sighs> that's kind of, kind of how I describe the Chris Middleton year. He was injured when he could play. He was he was pretty good, but there's always questions about his health. And he's an older player now. Not 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 going to be a def, not going to be a guy who's going to help you get stops. That entire Bucks team is has been average to below average defensively all year long. So they're going to have to depend on their offense, and particularly Dame Lillard, to get them through a series against the Pacers who are going to try to run them up and down the floor. The Pacers played them five times when you include the in-season tournament and beat them four times. Uh, we have Ballgate, where they where Giannis was upset that they stole his record-setting basketball. Let me clarify. It was about a basketball when I say Ballgate. He was upset. The Pacers took it. There was a thought of him going into in the locker room and getting it back. It was all resolved. So there's some there's some heat between those two. Sean's of the opinion, at least I think, that if Dame doesn't do this, uh, Dame time is dead. Or or, or what? It, what's your what's your full thoughts on this particular series of Dame doesn't keep them in it? It's, yeah, it's, uh, you're comparing them to a Blazers team that made like a Western Conference Finals. Yes. I I am just saying that you're playing the Indiana Pacers. Just you cannot lose the series before Giannis comes back. You can't be down like three one. Yes, like you, you just have to be either one one and Giannis comes back for game three or two one. Yeah, like you just have, you just can't get blown off the court by this Indiana team. I agree. I know. I know the the regular season record or whatever. I would. I would push back and say, you know, that ball game, uh, the ball gate game. That was in like December, maybe January. That's a long time ago. Yes, a lot that's of time true. has passed. That might be a coach ago for the uh, for the Milwaukee Bucks. It is, I think. So the like the uh, this is for a, a lot of the um, the what gets cited before these playoff series, the regular season series record. Or uh, can we go back and look at these games? Like, did they ha- did this game happen four months ago? Okay, then I who, <laughs> I don't who, care. Who about was playing? It. Who was sitting out? Was it the second out of a back to back? All those exactly. things play a part. And uh, d- did your coach get fired? Um, and so 
I, I, my expectation or my, I guess, standard that I'm he- holding Damian Lillard to is don't get thoroughly outplayed by Pascal Siakam and Tyrese Halliburton. Yeah, I would hope that— it's Just keep your—again, I'm not even saying you have to win this series and give Giannis a series off. Just stay in it. Make it so it's not us and others wondering when Gian- is Giannis going to force himself back into the series to save you. Yes, or or make it a situation where it's like, oh, Giannis is coming back. This series is over now. Yes, like, he's, we're- he, he's healthy. He's going to come back. He's going to put this series away. Not he's got to try to save you from another first round exit. Exactly, and that that's what I'm that's what I'm saying for Damian Lillard, who you know, I, I th- maybe some of this goes back to the last couple seasons with Dame, with the first like, nope, I'm loyal. I'm loyal to. Portland. Not running from the grind. We're going to build a contender here. And then they got like the fifth pick in the draft back to back years. Um, Actually, no, they got the fifth pick and then the third pick. And the second pick last year. No, they had the third pick. Scoot Henderson was the third pick. Yeah, you're right. Because Charlotte took uh, Brandon Miller. And they sat Dame to get that pick. And then Scoot Henderson had a not a great first year. Uh, We're talking about the five games. Last time they played was January 3rd. Third. So it's been, and they played five games between the start of the year and January 3rd. So, yes, it's been a long time. Patrick uh, Beverly was not on the Milwaukee Bucks. Well, clearly a difference maker, Patrick no, Beverly. No, but, uh, okay, I'm joking about Patrick Beverly, but was Pascal Siakam on the Pacers by that time? Um, When's the trade deadline? I February th- 8th. I don't think so. I think the trade happened after after they finished their five-game series. So so there's just so much that have, that have changed with these teams since then that, that the like series. I mean, the bad blood helps <laughs> that that it gets, sticks in your mind. But like the actual series, how it went, that the Pacers won. You said four out of five. Yeah, yeah. That that to me means very little. I I, I get that. I I agree. The Bucks did not hold the Pacers under one hundred and twenty two points in any of the five games. That means a little bit. Yeah. It does. I mean, the Bucks scored quite a bit too because the Pacers don't play really any defense. They've been better on, with Siakam. They kind of been average. Uh, now, but like we said, those games happened before uh, they got Siakam. So the play-in begins tonight. We have and it's the Western Conference play-in partly because the Sixers don't have their building, so they decide to put both conference games on the same night. That's generally not the case. They try to give the seven-eight matchup an extra day, but the the Flyers have the building, and partly because. The, the, the city of Philadelphia didn't expect the Sixers to be in the plan, so they scheduled the Flyers to have the had the building tonight. So they can't do that. So Western Conference tonight, and the Kings versus the Warriors. The Warriors beat the Kings in a, in a seven game series last year. In seven games, beat them in Sacramento to close out that series. And you have the Lakers against against New Orleans. The assumption for me, at least, is we're going to see New Orleans versus the Warriors to try to get the eight seed. Unless that stupid thing that ESPN is pushing happens where the Lakers go, you know what? We're going to try our luck against the Warriors. We're just going to throw a game against the Pelicans and play the Warriors because we don't want to see Denver. I don't suspect. Now, I do think it would have been funny if the games, if the Warriors Kings game was scheduled first so the Lakers can know the score and they could go, you know what? You know, if we play the Kings. Yeah, if the Kings had. The Kings that lost, which I expect to happen, but who knows? And then, hey, we can beat the Kings. Yeah, let the Pelicans win this game. It is funny though, because either way, it is it is the Pelicans who's a team that they kind of they match up very well against. Obviously, they played on Sunday and yeah. blew them out. Uh, and then on the other side, it's the Warriors, where you can just go. Well, do you want to be in a win or go home situation with with Stephen Curry on, on the other side, where he can just catch on fire and and then you also have the Kings, who both of us are like, oh, okay, yeah. hey, uh, Kings players, you can start, you can start playing for Cancun. Uh, the one thing your is, weekend is going to be free. The one thing is, if they did have to play the Kings, Sabonis owns Anthony Davis. That's, That's exactly the one it. thing. So, bo- bo- this path of like drop a game to go into a win, do or die, win or go home, like it, it makes sense in theory until you go. Well, then you have to actually like win that game and both situations are not insurmountable but they're also like it feels like you're getting too cute 
It feels like you're getting way too cute. Just just win the game. Just play the Nuggets. I know Denver's on the other side, and you don't beat them, but just win, win the game. Just win. Play the Nuggets. Yeah. I mean, don't add extra games to Anthony Davis, who could always limp off yeah, because of a back thing. That is part of it. It's like you win this game, then you're off until I forgot if there's Saturday or there's Sunday or Saturday. Uh, but either way. Game. But then as opposed to having to play on Thursday and then turning around and play Sunday. Yes, and. Imagine. And and as you mentioned, Steph, but but even Clay, Clay could show up and bury you. Like I mean, the Lakers aren't the Rockets, but we saw what happened when Clay decided he wanted to have a great night. Uh, he buried the Rockets, and the Rockets uh, could not recover. And it, it pretty much they were pretty much out of the playing race anyway. But that definitely put them out of it as far as any chance of having a hot streak down the stretch. So yes, the plan is tonight. Yep, and then we have uh, the Wednesday games. We can talk about that coming back uh, tomorrow. But. Draymond talks talked about. It. I think we have the sound for it. Draymond discussed what the play on meant, play in meant. Excuse me. LeBron early, very early on, said the plan was stupid and guys need to get fired. And this what this is what you'll hear from Draymond early on in the sound and kind of his response to those early thoughts about LeBron when the play in was brought to brought to the NBA. I hate the play in. Just so you all, I absolutely hate it. It's the best thing ever created. When you look at the play-in and what it's done for basketball, it's the best thing ever created. I don't know who came up with it. I know Bron said they need to be fired. If they were fired when Bron said that, they need to get their job back because the play-in is insane. Like, since the NBA has added the play-in, it's taken the last month and a half of the season to a totally different level. Like, totally different. And so, I hate the play-in. I especially hate being a 10 seed. But as much as I hate it as a basketball player, as a basketball fan, this playing is nuts. And you got to love it. That's Draymond from his podcast. You hear that sound effect as they close out. I, I decided to leave it because it was, it was going to be hard because they cut it so close. Yeah, so. it's funny. The boop thing at the end. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah I, I agree. I'm not a player, so I don't have so I don't have to worry about the extra stress. The playing made the Rockets last month plus in and enjoy enjoyable and meaningful and the Rockets wouldn't have had any shot if the plan did, plan didn't exist and this is a team who's had little to play for over the last couple of years and it made it made Rockets basketball something to pay attention to sure if you are a seven or an eight and put it into this a bit of a stressful situation trying to win a game to solidify your spot I get it who would like that when you've been clearly better. That that's not the West and the East. The seven and eight are clearly better than nine and ten, and they still one of them's gonna have to deal with a nine or a ten to try to get in the playoffs. I understand not liking it, but hey, be a top six team. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I think that's why LeBron was like, this person needs to be fired because in the first year they were a seven seed. Yes, <laughs> and so it's just like, why are we playing this extra game? And yes, uh, and now they're an eight seed, which which would make them a playoff team, and then they get to play. They would have been able to play OKC, a team they would have felt pretty good about. Now uh, they have to beat. New Orleans in New Orleans and then see the Nuggets if that's 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 their easiest path to see the Nuggets as a two seed and Draymond's right that it is it is it is a good idea like you do get fun games like I, I you're probably batting over 500 with how good these games like just it being entertaining and relatively high level because again these are nine and ten seeds we're talking about yeah but on the other hand like Part another part of my brain is like it's absolutely ridiculous that we're giving the ten seed a chance to make the playoffs. The like, ten what, seed in the what the hell are we doing? Yeah, the West ten seed. They're hit, never this good. It's yeah, winning forty six games <laughs> this and being is the a best case scenario, being a ten seed, sure. But then you got the Bulls and the Hawks. I I am not gonna watch the East the that's that game the, the nine Bulls, ten Hawks. Yeah, I'm out. I hope that. to not have to care about it because I root for a team in the seven eight. I hope not to have to care, but uh, you go to Philly. Uh, who knows how that that'll go? Night in, after the Flyers, in beads, yeah, and beads expected to play. He practiced, so uh, we'll see. But he's one awkward fall for, for, from leaving the game for like a half a quarter because that's been a thing for him over the last couple of nights. That's why he didn't play on, in Sunday because he left the game a couple times on on Friday. He he'll, he'll be available. Max will be available. Jimmy Butler, Adebayo, here will be available. So that'll be the 7-8 in the East. And then you'll have, uh, as we mentioned, the poo-poo game, the poo-poo platter game of uh, Bulls and Hawks. I but like the way that they ordered it to, so where it's like you can just go to bed. 
Like, yeah, you don't have to watch this. <laughs> you can just go to bed. You don't have to wake watch. up. Charmed will still be on. <laughs> yeah, maybe that's a great that's a great way to wake up. Young, not young, but you know, twenty something. Alyssa Milano and and uh, and the rest of the cast of Charmed. Yeah, Atlanta, Chicago. You would think they would have scheduled that one first to to get people to you know, hey, we got the the better game late, but that's the second game of the doubleheader. Everyone's gonna be like, ah, whatever. I mean, I'm gonna be like, yeah, whatever. Because this, whoever wins that game, I, I'll just say it. Whoever wins that game only has one game left in their season. Like both those teams, you can plan for Cancun. You, you and the Kings, preliminated. <laughs> preliminated for those two. I mean, they're. I, I, I'm talking about the nine seed and the nine in the West and the nine and ten seed in the East. They should already be eliminated. It's very true. And the only reason we care about the nine ten this year is because the Warriors are involved. Yeah, that, the, yeah, that that's the only reason I'm not throwing in the Warriors because, like, theory, like I think that they could beat the Pelicans if they play in a do or die game. In fact, I'd expect them to. Does that Pelican team doesn't in New Orleans going to the Smoothie King Center? Oh, okay, I know it's a tough environment. I understand. I understand what you're saying. I may have been too quick in my judgment. How could the Warriors possibly handle the Smoothie Center? They've never seen a place like this. Yeah, which will probably be half full, filled, with, filled with Warrior fans. They've no, never seen something like that. Before. They've never seen anything like that before. This is Game 7? Yeah. Normally they're bigger. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the play-in begins tonight. I think Draymond's right. Uh, he just so happens to, and his team happens to bring a bit of cachet to the 9-10. Because if it was Kings versus, I don't want to say this, Kings versus Rockets, we would care. But the rest of the league? Probably not. Uh, we are way late for a break. We'll come back. We'll get back into the Astros. They did lose last night. They'll try to bounce back today. We'll hear from Joe Espada. He talked about Spencer Aragetti's performance, and unfortunately, it was somewhat ruined by the lack of offense and then definitely ruined by Josh Hader's knife. We'll be back.
The Del Olalea Show continues on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's your host, Del Olalea. Welcome back to the show. The Astros go down 6-1 to one against the Braves last night. We'll hear from the Braves broadcast. They weren't they weren't too impressed with how Espada handled Joe, uh, Joe, uh, Josh Hader. Uh, Josh Hader, he of the one out, the one out, four runs given up performance, just an absolute disaster. The Braves just smacked him around. It was, uh, <laughs> it was station to station for a little bit as they were, they weren't in, they weren't pushing anything, I guess, because they just thought they could, they could continue to rack up hits, and they did. Scored four runs off of your closer, and now his ERA is over nine, which makes us kind of forget about. Spencer Arrogetti. He wasn't great, but it was a better performance than we saw in his first outing where he where the second time through the lineup, he was he got kind of lit up. And he met Sean and I's very low expectations for a starting pitcher. When you leave the game, keep your team in it. And he did that. And just because we 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 believe in his Astros lineup, we thought, hey, as long as you keep him in the game, they're gonna have a shot to win. Now he did his part, and the Astros only could come up with one run. And clearly wasn't enough. But this is Joe Espada discussing and evaluating our Getty start. Uh, you know what? I, I thought he threw the ball, you know, good enough to get us through the fifth. Um, but, yeah, he, you know, didn't finish a few hitters off. Um, we didn't make a few plays behind him. But I thought he was in the zone. His stuff was, was pretty good today. Um, I thought he threw the ball. You know, good enough just to at least get you, you know, get us like five innings. Um, but, you know, it didn't work out the way we wanted to. And watching the game, there are times where, where you felt like Arrogate was really close to, to getting a batter out. And Espada talked about it. They're just his inability to to close out a batter, extended his time out there. And he had a real shot to get through five, which would have been great for the bullpen, great for the team. Of course, it didn't matter overall because of the lack of hitting. One in, one for seven in, in, with runners in scoring position, which is the death knell for this Astros team. They can be explosive. They can they can have great a great inning. We saw that over the weekend against the Rangers. And then the other times, you're, they disappear. When Al, Altuve, great. Hitting over 400, another three hits. Nothing you can say about his performance other than he's been one of the best players in baseball at 33 years old. A credit to him for being who – who he is. Uh, you just haven't got that type of consistency from the rest of the lineup. The only other person who had a multi-hit game was Bregman, whose batting average is now over 250, which is good. Um, you hope, Hopefully that continues. But th- you had your opportunities, and when you couple that with the Pena throwing error and the Abreu not coming off the bag when it was clear that was going to give you trouble, uh, you, could, you can't make mistakes. Those type of mistakes when, you, when you're not able – the string hits together to, to push runs across. So you played a good baseball team. You got shut down by a Darius Vines, who they called up particularly for that start. His changeup gave the Astros trouble, and um, they they go down six to one. Now Josh Hader was the 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 subject of a lot of ire. He was a guy who was expected to even in games where he doesn't have the opportunity to, to close them out. It's supposed to keep you in it, and he didn't do that. Uh, the four runs, and as I mentioned. The, only the one out was very disappointing. But the Braves broadcast, of all people, took issue with Joe Espada. They didn't like the way he handled Joe. He, they didn't like the way they ha- he handled Josh Hader. And here's what they had to say. And quite honestly, not to pick on Joe Espada here too much, but to me this is a failure in, man- in bullpen management. The fact that somebody was not ready, that they have not gone out and gotten him out of this game right now, 19 pitches in and down by three, doesn't make any sense. No offense. But I understand, but he's your guy. He he is out there to shut an inning down, to close out their lineup, and then go try to go get a win. So not having someone ready through 19 pitches when Josh Hader is the one you're depending on to get you to the bottom of the ninth inning in the game, I'm not going to kill a spot. I know people take issue with any managerial move, but how about your high-priced closer? Go get some outs. And at that point, I'm, I don't want to waste another guy after you've put us in a position where we're not in the ball game anymore. I yeah. don't want to put, I don't want to throw Belak out there because I'm probably going to need him tomorrow. Yeah, at a certain point, it's it, it's kind of like how 
how we th- feel about some of the starters is that in some of these games, you're just going to have to wear this one. Yeah. Like you're just going to have to, you're going to have to get lit up and just finish the inning. Just like you said, because you know what? We're going to need some of these guys tomorrow. I got Hunter Brown a, pitching tomorrow. In a game, well, yeah. In a game that will start zero to zero. Probably won't be zero to zero for, for very, very long. long. No. Uh, but it will start zero to zero. So there, there is a little bit of, yeah, it's like, well, it's 19 pitches, like in the pitch clock era, too. So th- this is this is fast. This is happening really quickly. <laughs> it, it didn't get out of hand until pitch, like, 15. Yeah. <laughs> Managerial malpractice. I think that's a little strong. I feel like— I it, thought it was going to be for, like, using hair, hair in that there. In that situation, which you might take issue with, but managerial malpractice, I think you see a young, you see a first-time manager, you're taking a shot. They're not, they're not yeah. saying that about Dusty Baker. No, no, I, I think, yeah, I think it kind of plays into a narrative of like, well, you know, that that's why you need an experienced hand there on, on the top step, uh, you know, to bullpen management. And it's like, I don't know, dude. Like, this guy, this guy's pitched, I think, nine innings this year. Maybe this was his 10th inning. Just go get year. me some outs, please. Yeah. Please. I, that is kind of at a certain point that I get it doesn't make for great sports talk radio but like i feel like fans should just have this uh feeling of we do a lot of blaming of front office members and of coaches especially managers especially the last couple of years yeah definitely at a certain point it's like hey josh Hader, get three outs what do you here for other than to come into the ninth like, inning closing or not and go get me three outs you know like like we said like spencer getty did his job yeah seth martinez did his job everybody Rafael else Matero did his job like everybody <laughs> else who pitched last night did their job except for josh Hader. again if this is a if if even if he still has to throw 19 pitches he just doesn't give up runs maybe they're more walks they're longer at bats whatever and it's still 2 to 1 going to the bottom of the ninth they still lose are we going Managerial mal- malpractice for for Joe Espada, or oh, is it because it's because their closer gave up. He didn't runs? foresee that he needed to br- have Brandon Belak ready to Warming go. Warm up immediate. Like we're putting in Hater immediately. Belak start warming up. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the you, the pitch clock thing is a great point. It, it as is it isn't as if this took twenty minutes or what we were used to when it comes to baseball. This is this is in the pitch clock era and era, and he was getting lit up over nineteen pitches. Just go get me some outs, Hater. It's a it's an easy shot to go after Joe Espada. And sure, you're the road broadcast, no one, or you're the opposing team's broadcast. No one's gonna care. But of course, in this era of uh, social media and the internet, we can find anything. And so, someone for the Astro who roots for the Astros has a Twitter account about the Astros, found it, and brought him up. Nah, I, I, we can get after managers for some things, like you know, pinch hitting with John Singleton. That's never going to work out. I don't understand any of that. But but your high price reliever. Keep me in the ball game. I don't want to I hate quoting the Patriots. I never want to, but do your job. Just do your job and we're not having this this discussion and Josh Hader would tell you, I didn't do my job. Can't even ask the guy to get two outs apparently and you can't. You only got him one. Stupid Braves broadcast got me upset about baseball. When do I ever get upset about baseball? It's a new day, and it took the road broadcast. I'm all in on Todd Callis hating on the the wave. I was thrilled by that commentary. The Braves commentary about Espada, whatever. Uh, the Astros have a chance to bounce back tonight, and it'll be Hunter Brown on the mound, which sh- sure gives me a lot of confidence. I can't believe it. I can't believe Spencer Art. Spencer Arrogetti did exactly what we wanted to, and we still couldn't get a win. He pitched better than Josh Hader. <laughs> Way better than Josh Hader. Way better. Come on. Um, and the re- and like we said, the rest of the anybody else who threw a baseball for the Astros from the mound did their job. The only guy who didn't was the guy we certainly expected to. He just hasn't been that guy yet. Certainly a lot of time to rectify the situation. But the ERA over, over nine, disappointing. Alex, I see you. You want to talk Astros. We'll talk about them and a couple other things when we come back.
You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Welcome back to the show. I know a lot of people probably forgot when Blake Griffin was a really good basketball player, but he was at one point, and then he got traded to the the clip. Uh, he got traded to the Pistons, and everyone decided, "Nah, we're not gonna pay attention to Blake Griffin anymore." Well, he's retired. Blake Griffin, the the showstopper of Lob City. Uh, we remember those Chris Paul, De- DeAndre Jordan teams, coached by Doc Rivers and Vinny Del Negro, among others, who never who never achieved what. Their potential suggested they could. He has retired from the game of basketball, at least on the NBA level. Who knows what he'll do? Maybe he'll be in the big three at some point. We got breaking news. Breaking news. Possibly. Possibly bigger than Blake Griffin. Hall of very good. Uh, well, actually, probably Hall of Famer. Probably Famer. Hall of Famer. Depends on who you root for when you, when this news, if you were going to nah, determine which, I, which is bigger I or not. This is, this is shattering the world oh. of baseball. Oh, really? Okay. What is it? From Chandler Rome. The Astros are calling out. Forrest Whitley, a source tells The Athletic, one of baseball's top pitching prospects. Oh, no, once baseball's, <laughs> once baseball's top pitching prospect. Willie gets his first call up after enduring a bunch of injuries. He didn't say a bunch. Uh, Whitley will work as a reliever. So Forrest Whitley to the big show. And this is where the Astros are. Where a guy we had almost, speaking of right forgetting about guys we had almost forgotten about other than oh yeah what's Forrest Whitley doing he made his debut in, in 2024 last week he had inflammation in his middle finger surprisingly Forrest Whitley had an injury concern but he made his debut last week flipping too many people off <laughs> is that what it is uh but he will be on the major league roster so the Astros looking for pitching help anywhere they can find it Forrest Whitley is the latest call up so in the bullpen hopefully this is the start of something where he can be depended on. Not a, That hasn't been the case, and it's been well-documented. But as Channel Rome said, once a top pitching prospect in all of baseball is now back on the major league level. So what level of excitement do I have for this? Eh, we'll see. We'll see. 26 years old, going to get an opportunity. Let's see what happens. I can't get excited about this, but I'm sure what? some people will. What What's there to be excited about? Well, you know, he um, he was drafted by Jeff Luno. How so. long? Yes, that's a long time ago now. I mean, but look look at all the success that Jeff Luno's draft picks have had. Okay. So he's got some of that. I mean, at this point, being drafted by Jeff Luno and just now making your major league debut, probably not a good thing. But still, um, you know, he's not. He's not some of the other jokers that we've uh, that we've seen the Astros run out there. He could be a new joker. He's not Blair Henley, you know. We don't know that yet. <laughs> we don't know that yet. I know the Blair Henley thing is funny. I guess, I guess, guess we don't. but we don't know that yet. <laughs> no, the funny part was we don't know that yet. <laughs> yeah, we don't know if he's one of those other jokers. He's not Wander Suero. You he's keep not. you keep talking. Let let's let's see him first. He wasn't great last year. Last <laughs> year, guys gotten out, or I guess they got one out. Yeah, Blair Henley gotten out. It was just the one. Hey, Josh Hader can only get one out. Let's not not getting one out. <laughs> Hader only gave up four runs. Henley gave up five. True, that, that's true. But Henley, and that's left, why that's why Hader gets paid the big bucks. But Henley didn't keep his team out of the game. They went on to win that game. What did Josh Hader true. do? He true. pitched his team out of the game. True. And, I mean, yeah, and he forced true. the Braves broadcast to rip into Joe Espada. So all negatives for for Josh Hader. Henley didn't do that. The Royals, the Royals broadcast didn't get after, or the Rangers broadcast didn't get after a spotter. You know, Whitley, a guy who can give give some innings for when they'll need it. Yes, yeah, <laughs> innings. You're going plural. Yeah, yeah. When it when I I'm just gonna say, I mean, statistically, because Spencer Arigetti had such a good start, and again, such a good start, four innings pitched, two earned runs. Uh, that makes me less confident in what we're going to get from uh, France or Brown coming up where I feel like I feel like we're due for a, a blow up. Yeah, because Arigetti exceeded expectations, or at least our expectations. Yeah, I think I think one of those guys is going to have to drag the average back down or the ERA back up, I guess. Yeah, something like that. But uh, 
yeah, I just, you know, there's a chance we get to see him in the second or third inning of the next couple of days. <laughs> it's, unfortunately, that's really possible. Uh, he'll work out of the bullpen. He struggled as a starter with the with the Cowboys, Space Cowboys, last year. But he'll be a guy, another arm to the bullpen, and hopefully one where, as Sean said, can, can work a couple innings. I think that's I think that's being op- optimistic. Hopefully not the second or third, but you know, it's not off the table. Hopefully, it's like the sixth. You think they're going to bring him in in high leverage situations? No, hopefully, or I guess okay. He would Ho- probably. Hopefully, it's the sixth inning and the Astros are up. 11 yes. To How about three. he's like Boban, a victory cigar. He comes in. He comes in when the Astros are way up in games, and he come and he's solid. That's what I'm hoping for. Okay. Okay. Uh, just not to waste an arm you care about in a tight ball game. Alex, let's talk about the Astros. We'll, we'll get them before we go to break. What's up, Alex? What's going on, guys? Um, so I watch a lot of the games illegally because uh, I'm not paying for all the cable and satellite. I'm not doing all that. Kindred, so I, I watch all the games illegally. And kindred spirits, oftentimes, Alex. Oftentimes, excuse me? I, I said we're kindred spirits. We're doing the same thing. Oh, well, uh, like, so, so then you know what I'm talking about. You end up uh, listening to a lot of opposing team broadcasts. Like, I mean, uh, I'd say 60% of the games that I watch are, uh, I'm listening to the other team's broadcast team. And it really, honestly, it makes me appreciate Todd and, and Jeff a lot more because they're really good. Their personalities are just like, they're, they're, they're great. They're great. Uh, there's a couple of other, uh, franchises out there that are also you know pretty good but man the Braves the whole game were just talking down about the Astros as if they as if they've been doing something for the last few years they won one world series they haven't been around sniffing very you know very close lately I I mean why I don't know where this attitude or the stance comes from it's ridiculous and frankly if uh, if Spencer Arigetti got a little bit better play from uh, Jeremy Pena, I think that he probably goes another thirty pitches, at least another a whole other inning. That guy did that guy did his job and then some. I was really expecting two innings. I got way more out of him than I thought. And they, I mean, Jeremy kind of that hero ball needs to chill. He needs to set his feet and make that throw. But uh, man. They need to get this sorted out. It's really starting to stress me out, and I need I need a little bit more normalcy and and consistency in my summer. And I don't want this this losing consistency. So whatever, Y'all have a good one. Appreciate it, Alex. Yeah, I, I hear a lot of the the road broadcasts, as I mentioned earlier, the opposing team broadcasts. The Braves thing, I did I had the game on mute, uh, so I didn't hear them while I was watching. Uh, we just if you missed it, we played sound of the Braves getting after Joe Espada. I don't know. Maybe it's just simply we hate the Astros because of 2017 and the cheating stuff. It could be as simple as that. Uh, I don't know if that's something that is through every broadcast around the, around the major leagues where that's still being held against the Astros. I'm not sure who called the game uh, because I go to the Braves broadcast uh, team website, at least on MLB.com, and there are multiple guys who could be on the game. Brandon Galdine is, is, is apparently their play-by-play guy for Bally Sports South. And Southeast, you know, Tom Glavin is on broadcast. Jeff Frank Coors on broadcast. I'm not exactly sure uh, who was in there last night, uh, but yeah, they were harsh on the spot. I thought I thought that was necessary. And then you're telling me it was throughout the game. It could be simply, hey, they cheated. We hate them. We're going to talk down on them. I mean, that might be all there is to it, as opposed to an unbiased take on the Astros. And, you know, the Astros are struggling, so I guess right now it's easy to take those shots. But we don't care about the Braves so much. Sure, they took that one World Series from us. Uh, but overall, uh, the Astros have been a much more successful organization over the last, what, eight years now? Yeah, yeah. Braves need to worry about beating the Phillies, all right? <laughs> worry about that. Yeah, relax, Braves. How dare you come at Run our into guys? That buzz. I, bet they, I bet they're way more respectful with the Phillies when they talk. But they bet they call call them all call Kyle Schwarber sir when they see him. <laughs> Ask him if he'd like a a, yeah. a fresh towel. Yeah. Uh, you so need some water, Mister Harper. <laughs> oh, is is that too cold? You did you want room temperature water, Mister Harper? Yeah. Um, sparkling. Yeah, I don't I don't know how they talk about the 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 the, the Phillies, but call call him dad is probably what they do. Daddy. <laughs> they talk about the Phillies in hushed tones because they don't want to upset daddy. 
it's fine. You got you got your one World Series, and it's 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 bragging rights. But the Astros have certainly won one since, and we're going to be okay. Not a great start of the year, but we'll be just fine. And the big news, if you want to call it that, is Force Whitley up to the majors, and he'll try to help out that Astros bullpen. We got one more segment to go here on the show. Anyone else want to call in before we wrap up? You're more than welcome to 713-780-3776. We'll be back. You're listening to the Dell Olalea Show on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Dell Olalea. Welcome to the final segment of the show. Come on, and George are up next. And then they're going to be followed by the Killer Beasts. Tomorrow, John and Lance are going to be out at the at the Chevron Chevron Championship. Now, it's just a practice round, but they're going to be out there. And it looks like I have narrowly avoided driving to the Woodlands. Lance, because he's Lance. Because uh, some of the background is the producers are generally the engineers for the shows. They go out there. So every morning when there's a – well, when there's a – Full day remote. I'm the one who sets up uh, the kind of the remote. John and Lance start, and I'm there setting it up. And then you hear the shows through the rest of the day. Uh, changes when some of the, when it starts at 12. So Joe gave them information about how to set it up. Like, okay, uh, 
because we're not scheduled to be out there. Apparently, maybe they need the room starting at 10. So it's just going to be the John Lance show from 7 to 10. That was the only thing that was scheduled. And then Joe's like, okay, guys, uh, this is how you're going to set it up. If you have any questions, email me. And, the John, and then Lance goes, well, we're not very good at this thing. Dell's great at it, so he should come out. And I was like, you son of a <laughs> – what are you doing? And then he had to email Joe and goes, actually, Joe, I was kidding. Because, of course, Joe doesn't see it till later. So Joe's starting to make calls and emails and sending – Sending stuff to the uh, to the to the to the tournament, saying, "Hey, can we keep it? We can we have another show out there from ten to 12? I know, I know, we didn't really try to get that uh, through in a in a reasonable time frame, but hey, could that happen? Thankfully, uh, Joe did. Thankfully, it's been worked out where I don't have to go out there. Uh, stupid Lance. I was trying had, to avoid that Joe drive to the Woodlands. The Jets, yeah, it, I got a text about waking up at seven. Yeah, because Joe sent all the producers the information based off of Lance joking around. Joe ain't got time for that. He's got his show. He's got a family. And he's the like the the guy who makes everything happen as far as scheduling. And Lance is just using his using his free time when he's not like again evaluating the last of his prospects yeah. to make Joe's life harder. Are not there some undrafted free agents he should be looking yeah. at? Yeah, stop complaining about your editor questioning some of your some of your comps. Yeah. Apparently you got time to make jokes. Break down some Jordan Whittington tape, all right? Who wants to do that? Who Great. wants to? Has the potential to be a good special Who team. wants to break down the third or the fourth option for the Texas Longhorns this past year behind Sanders, Worthy, and Mitchell? I got Who wants to do that? Jordan Whittington. Shout out to the hair, though. Appreciate yeah. that hair. Leader, leader of men. Is he? I don't know. That, if he's staying in college long enough, you just, oh, he's a leader. You've been around long enough that and sure. you're not a complete knucklehead. If you're old, if you're old and and not a problem child, then you're a leader. If you haven't transferred after five years in college, yeah, that's an upset at this point. The fact that he hung around for that long through uh, a coaching change too, and uh, still uh, a great Longhorn. I guess I don't yeah. know. It was he a great Longhorn? Was he was all right. Good. He'll be welcome back. You know, in five ten years when he's when they. Hey, is that Jordan Winnington on the sideline? I, honestly, the death of the Longhorn Network has – that is a category of uh, Texas X uh, football player or basketball player that, like, has now just been wiped away. Where before I was said Jordan Winnington would 100% be on the studio crew of a uh, Longhorn Network game. But now, sadly, that won't exist anymore. It's a rough one. I don't know. I don't know what Quan Cosby is going to do now. All those jobs out the window for for good Texas players who weren't great in the NFL. How's that? How's yeah. that going to work Jordan out? Jordan Shipley. I don't know. Hope, What's he going to do? I don't know. Hope, sh- hope you have a day job. <laughs> I haven't seen one. <laughs> I'm, maybe he's an investment banker. Who knows? I'm sure. This. I'm sure it's something like that. He he, uh, he and Cole McCoy are in commercials still in Austin. They're still running those yeah. those guys has such name recognition they're still running commercials for people well you gotta imagine it's the like people one company the though. people who are running businesses now were probably in college when those guys are great yeah so it it, it, it tracks that and, they would want those know, guys for a while there wasn't there a there wasn't nil so you can you can get you know because now there's a lot of quinn ewers commercials but you also couldn't you know you probably weren't throwing shane bouchelle in a lot of commercials no, Garrett Gilbert didn't make it. Yeah, David Ash isn't going to – I haven't seen any David Ash commercials since he's uh... – The pipeline of S- from Tex- of Texas quarterbacks who wound up playing pretty well at SMU. It's pretty deep, actually. Surprisingly. It's not, it's not bad, actually. Hey. Good evaluation. Quinn yours if things don't go right this year? You don't love the Lance Erline grade that you get uh, next January? There's an so, ACC team. So you'd rather have him leave than stay just because so, to Arch needs to play? I mean, isn't that reasonable? If he if he doesn't play well enough to get dr- to be a first round pick, well, eh. a third round quarterback, it's still a pretty good college quarterback. Yeah, yeah, I guess Spencer Rattler was pretty good at one of his schools, kind of for like half a season. Yeah, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting when football season begins and you're less than you're less you're less than a discreet slander of Quinn Ewers begins in earnest when there are actually games to talk about. No, no what happens is I, I'll I'll fall in line during the season. Yeah, you got to root for your team. Yeah, you gotta you gotta close it you know close it down. But in the off season, 
But <laughs> yeah, right now, all yeah. fun and games until he's throwing he's throwing dirt balls on third and five, and yeah, you need a first then, down. Then it's not so fun anymore. No, it won't be fun. Yeah, before we go, then I'll be right, before, <laughs> which is always more important than anything else. Being right, <laughs> I understand. Even you as tell me, yeah, yeah, you tell me. To be fair, yes, I'd rather be right about Chris Ball than him proving me wrong at this point because I can't imagine him proving me wrong. Um, before we go, the. The Cleveland Browns have decided to sign Christian Kirk- Kirksey and Rashad Higgins to one-day deals so they can retire as Browns. Christian Kirksey and Rashad Higgins get that type of treatment. What's the comparison for the Texans? Like if – how I don't want to go back too far, but a, like Kirksey played for the Browns for about five or six years where Higgins – I don't know how long he did. Zach Cunningham? Yeah. If, Zach, if they signed – if they brought back Zach Cunningham and who knows – I don't know who the receiver would be. Um, oh, I don't know. Because it's tough. been a, hot, a lot of turnover here. Yeah. But if you go back a while, like if Kevin Walter s- signed a one-year deal with the Texans. One day. One day deal, yeah. One day, and Zach Cunningham did to retire as Texans. And then Browns announced it. Bryce McCain is, is back. There's another one. By the way, Christian Kirksey didn't accomplish anything as a Brown. Why are they doing this? That just struck me as, wow, the Browns, the new Browns, not a great history, if that's what they're doing. We're done for the day. Gallant and George are up next, followed by the Killer Bees. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Welcome into Glenn George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Once again, the Houston Astros, after we were feeling so good yesterday, 
Josh Hader comes in down one run in the ninth inning. And Paul and Sean, he was just a disaster. Josh Hader, this guy is making $95 million over the next five years. And for me, it's too early to be like, this is going to be a Rafael Montero, but a lefty. But Josh Hader, it, this is not what you paid this guy for. And there's only there's not even a guarantee that you win this game, obviously. It's not like he, it was a closed situation or a save situation. But what a, what a letdown performance, again, from Josh Hader, who has been wildly inconsistent to start the season. Spin zone. Josh Hader is making the Rafael Montero deal look a whole lot better. Rafael Montero has been good this year. How about new money Montero going almost 40 pitches mm. and actually holding things down against the Atlanta Braves? What's crazy about yesterday is, yes, the Astros offense didn't show up again. But to what you were saying about Josh Hader, legitimately every other Astros pitcher, I guess Brandon Bielek didn't really, did what they were supposed to mm -hmm. against arguably the best lineup in baseball. And then Josh Hader comes in there with his now nine plus ERA, allowing a run in four of his nine outings thus far. And I know some people are going to say, well, he was in a non save situation. I don't care. Who effing cares? Get out. How much of an obsessive, compulsive person does a pitcher have to be to not get out because it's not a save situation? It should not be this difficult. And that's legitimately the only explanation that I have for this, Joe. Yesterday, we talked about how Josh Hader, in one year, is making about what? Hector Neris, Phil Maton, and... Ryan Stanek. ...would make this season. And yet, <laughs> he's not as good as any of them right now. Well, Phil Maton got rocked yesterday. He got five earned runs and lost. But it, it's not its not good enough. It's not good enough. Like, the idea that Joe Espada should not have gone to Josh Hader in that situation because it's not a save situation. Oh, yeah. The people I, are mad at Espada over there. Wrong. This. You're wrong. You got to go to Hader. He's Ooh, making $95 million over the next five years. Get three outs. Are pitching. you guys telling me that in game seven of the World Series and you're down by one run, you don't want Josh Hader on the mound? Well, it depends on if he pitched the night before, Joe. Oh, he got one out. He got one out. I know he warmed up. I know he warmed up and he got one out. And you, I guess you could have used Presley in that situation. Who also, for the record, who everyone's calling for Ryan Presley, was never good in these situations either. It was the same thing. These closers are weird creatures. I don't understand it. It is the same game. It is the same amount of outs. Yep. It is the same goal. Mm -hmm. Get three outs. Whether you strike out, pop out, ground out. Get them out. Josh Hader couldn't do it. And he just, last night, I, I just, I have no words, honestly, it feels like. Because it is, it looks like another one of these awful committee contracts. I'm no longer going to say Jeff Bagwell contracts because Reggie Jackson made that very clear. It's not just Jeff Bagwell. But Crane, Bagwell, Biggio, because you get thrown in this too now because of Reggie Jackson, bad contracts it looks like. It, it's early on that one for him. But this is not what you expected from Josh Hader when you signed him. Definitely not. He has sucked. He sucked. And, I mean, it was a night last night where other Astros did their jobs, and it was actually a good game until Josh Hader came in. Obviously, the Astros bats, I don't know what to say. I mean, Jordan Alvarez had a couple of situations where um, grounded into a double play. He pops out with a couple of runners on, but they couldn't get a runner past second base from, I think, the first inning on. Not good. You want to score runs. The runners in scoring position struggles were back. The left on base struggles were back. But... I think it is fair to focus on Hader because this has been a reoccurring problem. His ERA is 9+. plus. Is he going to turn it around? You hope so. But no amount of Jeff Bagwell propaganda, Dana Brown propaganda, is going to make me feel good right now because of what he is making. This is a guy that you are paying enough to be pitching, honestly, every single night. Yeah, and I and I, I hate the, the pitching nonsense we always hear after the game. Joe Espada talked about how I was... His stuff is good. He's just missing his spots. Well, find your spots, dude. You're, you're, you're too good 
to be this erratic in this moment. And it just and, and like Junior Bronco and, and the Twitch here is is fairly pointed out. I don't think they would have scored anyways. You're probably right. Like they pro they probably wouldn't have scored and they probably would have lost anyways because obviously they didn't score in the ninth down by five. They, they probably weren't going to get one more run. I don't know. You get to extra innings. All you got to do is get one hit. It is definitely beneficial to the home team in that situation, especially considering they couldn't get runners to even second. It was hard for them to get there. Yeah. I know they had lots of situations where runners were, runners were in scoring position. I think it was seven. They were one for seven, I believe. But uh, if it gets to extra innings, you have a chance. Offense didn't show up, but Hayter just basically threw it away. Yeah. There was never a chance. Did anyone think that they were going to score on a night like last night that after Josh Hader gave up those four hits in a row. No. no and no. then on top of that, Bielak just beat down his pants. So in, in five outings this year, Josh Hader, he gave, he had that first game where he showed up um, and it didn't, and he gave up the, the walk off to the, or no, he gave one run to the Rangers. They won that game. These are his last five outings, but there's a, there's a trend I'm noticing uh, when he walks guys, it doesn't go well. Now, that might sound simplistic, but there are a lot of pitchers we see in baseball. I and mean, we talked about Blake Snell for how long when we were hoping the Astros were going to sign him. He walks a lot of guys and he finds a way to control the damage. But last night, like when, when Hader walks with that first batter, I don't know. It's not, it's not Fromber ish where it's like things unravel, but he definitely looks way more uncomfortable than I guess I realized with runners on base. Because when there's no one out there, he seems to just feel, look much looser in the moment. But it, it just it unraveled so quickly for him last night, and it's just it's just not what you did. And I I really I can't place any of this blame on on Joe Espada. I really you can. I, How, I, I, I think you're spending like too much move. time on Astros Twitter, though. I think you're spending too much time on that. I don't think so. I, I mean, I don't see many people outside of that that are going to Joe Espada, who know a thing, that are that are blaming things on Espada. I, I think that right now some people are finding him to be a convenient scapegoat. I think others well, are, that's, are maybe screwing that's around. Fair. But I, I, I feel like the people that are doing that are idiots. It's it's not their fault. I To what Jeff Bagwell was saying in his propaganda speech that he had on Friday before the Astros uh, completely blew it, uh, hey – Players play, pitchers pitch. Those guys are supposed to take care of their jobs. The idea that putting Josh Hader in, in, in the ninth inning is an issue is crazy to me. You're paying him enough to, again, pitch every single night. $95 million, pitch every night. Pitch four nights a week. Yeah, I, I know that they've used him a lot. I, I, I hear that argument, but to what Joe Espada was saying last night after the game, too, is one of the challenges that the Astros are facing is kind of what are their options? At this point, I mean, this bullpen is taxed. So maybe in, in a perfect world, you you don't want to use Josh Hader in that situation. I I guess I I'm with you. Like that's what he's there for is yeah. to, is to try to help you win the game. He's and your get best the, reliever. Yeah, like you're paying him that way. He just he is statistically over his career. He's by far your best reliever. Has the best stuff. Just you, he's got to get the outs. But to the where the you're hurting at times from the rotation still being so poor you know, last week is like your bullpen's taxed. So in that moment, you kind of have to go to Josh Hader. I, I, I'm with you there, but here's here's the other thing on top of that. Okay, the taxed bullpen has done a decent job the last couple of outings. They've done a decent job. Now, obviously, things have hit the fan in a couple of situations, but look, you have a guy that is making that much money, and it is his, I think, responsibility to pick up some of the workload because of the relievers you no longer have and the starting pitchers you no longer have. This is why you gave him that contract, right? So he's got to continue to go out there, and he's just got to pull his head out of wherever the hell it is. Yeah, my my biggest issue was last night with using him, though, I will say, is that because it was a non-save situation, he's going to be down today, and, and you might want him today in your bullpen. I know that's being optimistic that you're going to have a, a chance to win today's game. And look, like they're saying here on the text line on the Twitch, just like win the next two games and it doesn't matter. You're right. You're right. But it's not, but this isn't just one game with Josh Hader. It, it's there's multiple instances this season where you've asked him to do something like this and he's just been unable to, and you're paying this guy too much money to not consistently come through for you. I don't think it's going to be a bad contract over time, at least over the first two uh, years, but I hope it's not going to be a bad contract over time. Five-year contract, it is probably going to be bad at some point. Sure. That's very fair. 
I mean, he, he's, it's a, it's a long contract. He's a reliever. Relievers are finicky year to year. You, you can't predict guaranteed success for the majority of relievers, not named Mariano Rivera. Yeah. Um, I, it's, it, blame is on the players. That's where, to me, the, the biggest part of yesterday's game is, and it's on Josh here, but it's also on the lineup. Like, like you mentioned, it, it is the same old stuff. I think you're what, you're 0 for 18 from guys like Jordan Alvarez, Jose Abreu, Chas McCormick. I can't remember who else, but you, you just, the lineup, the lineup's the lineup. Like, it, that's one thing where Josh Hader, it's, it is a different flavor of the day of what's going wrong with the, the Astros. The rest of the lineup, it, it's just frustrating. It, that's that's all they are at this point. I don't know how long we can just constantly complain about the Astros not coming through on a consistent basis because it just might be their story in 2024. It, it's you hope at some point they figure it out and they're more consistent. But this is a good Atlanta Braves team. They they had you figured out well yesterday. At least Alex Bregman was good. Alex yeah, Bregman, two yeah. hits. Jose Altuve, three hits, and no one got past second base. Yeah, it's it is just one of those one of those games for the Houston Astros, and yeah, they win the next two games versus the Atlanta Braves, and every everything will feel much better. But Josh Hader just not good uh, in last night's performance. Your reaction to last night's game is what's going on with the Astros seven one three seven eight zero three seven seven six. Spencer Arigetti, he was pretty good, and the Houston Astros. Well, it might be Arigetti's last game with the team because the Houston Astros are making a a call up eight years. In the making. We'll get to that next year in Glotton, George on ESPN 97.5 and 
It's Gallant and George on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Broadcasting live from the Veritex Community Bank Studios, here's Paul Gallant and Joe George. From the 832, pitching coach has to go. I said it before the year started. No one has gotten better. Everyone got worse. You know what? I don't know nothing about pitching coaches, but yes, I agree. I have nothing to base that off of besides what my eyeballs tell me. And all I know is that since Brent Strom left, the Astros pitching has gotten way worse. Right, now, maybe, now look, we were spoiled. Best ERA of all time in, the, in that World Series run that they had in 22. So it's impossible to live up to that standard. But from Abreu to what we've seen from Presley, Immediately from Hader, even though he's a little bit different because he wasn't on the team. Montero with Strom, without Strom. I I think I'm in. I think I'm in I'm on out. this. I'm out. I'm out. I'm tired of everyone making excuses for all the players. I really am. The, the pitchers are sucking. It's the coach's fault. Is the coach supposed to hold his arm in the right spot and make sure that it's the correct motion? Like he's one of those creepy golf coaches that's going to get a little handsy with you, you know? <laughs> I, I mean, can we stop? Why? I, What's the it, difference? It's the catcher's fault. It's the pitching coach's fault. How about the pitchers stop sucking? Like, yeah, it, but that's how but that's how it always works. But, the the but, pitchers but, are bad, and then you replace the coach, and you try to make them better. Right, so they're fall guys. I, I, I think it's strange that in baseball of all sports that we continuously look at other reasons for struggles when the guys are just supposed to execute out there. Oh, no, that I agree with. Like, they are, but they're clearly not. So at some point, like, something has to change. You have to make changes when things aren't going well. And, and to be honest... Nothing they've done has worked. Whatever they've tried, the inconsistencies we've seen with Christian Javier, with Hunter Brown, like from Rivaldez, they're just running the same thing out time and time again. Maybe a new voice in the room is 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 needed. I mean, it, it is worse. But what's he going to tell since, them to do? I don't know. Stop sucking? Tell them <laughs> why they're advice. sucking? <laughs> but is there anything that's being picked up? I mean, wouldn't you think that the broadcast would be highlighting some of whatever issues these pitchers are going through. Sure. I, I don't know if it's as simple as you look at film and there's something that's not going on. And we talked about it yesterday. Michael Schwab and some of the other uh, Astros Twitter mafia were perhaps saying, um, pointing to Yiner Diaz perhaps being a part of this. Sure, but ultimately, I, I just think this is at the feet of the pitcher. I don't know that another coach, Joe as good as Brent Strom is, is going to come in here and make the Astros, all of their pitchers, pitch to the 99th percentile of their ability. Now, that I, I totally, I agree with you, Paul. Like, I, I agree that a new pitching coach might not just solve all these problems, but because of some of the decisions that this front office and ownership group has made with your roster, clearly adding other arms to the bullpen is something that's going to be challenging. Like, like they're not able to, or they chose not to go in and replace 200 innings this offseason. They chose to do it with one guy. So if things are not going to be better, yes, there is going to be a fall guy. Now, and 90% of coaches are fall guys, right? Like, the, like Lovey Smith and David Culley are the exceptions to the rule of why a coach is fired. 99% of the time, if it probably it is more than 90 it's the player's fault. It's always the player's fault in any sport. But someone has to get the blame. And as much as I would love for the players to get all of it, well, Rafael Montero's contract is going nowhere. Now, he's been pretty good so far this season. So it's it's almost he's almost a spitty in the face of my own argument here at this point. But something's got to change. And I would like to see if it continues this way through the season. I'm not talking about change now, but if if this season is this roller coaster and frustration with the bullpen and the pitching, and it doesn't get better, it's probably time for a new voice in the room. Hiring a new coach could work. Hiring a new coach could make it worse. Sure. I, I think that that's one of the things you always expect when you are replacing one coach with another, that the next guy is going to definitively be better. But, I mean, there might just be no reaching these guys and telling them to, I don't know, stop again, sucking, because they're sucking, and they should stop that because it's bad. It's bad when you give up runs. It's bad when Fact. you give up four straight singles and you're paid $95 million to come into a game and be the person that is taking care of everything for your bullpen. It's bad. 